the people in the capital turned their gazes towards the stirring man Russell Raymond. Raymond. A young man held out a card. The gatekeeper looked at the card and then at the young man thinking Raymond, isn't that the family that built the country? It was noble Russell Raymond, a young man with a hooded cloak and red eyes. The gatekeeper wondered when looking at the boy's dirty clothes and wounds. Why is he dressed like that? The gatekeeper thought to himself. The gatekeeper returned the card and said, after checking, you can come in. Another gatekeeper looked inside and asked how do you know him, the other answered that he belonged to the Raymond family that built the country. The gatekeeper was surprised, so why did he look like that? After Russell entered, behind were the talks of nobles and yet they were dressed like that, it seemed like the family that built the country wasn't that big of a deal, that's right, I heard that the White Tower was recruiting mercenaries, is that why, no, he's not that poor, why would a noble become a mercenary? Russell's face was full of anger. Russell is so annoying that these bastards talk a lot. Russell stood and observed the capital, Camelot. Russell continued walking. Russell stood and looked up at the magnificent castle, the magic tower where all the kingdom's servants gathered. Russell stared at the magic tower where he once worked hard to get here. So that my family doesn't collapse. After his father died in a battle with the empire. It was a fierce battle and Russell's father was killed. When the war broke out, Russell and everyone had to flee the castle and enter the magic tower to regain their family's territory. Russell was still a child at that time, he was pulled away from his mother. Excited lock password with a necklace with a ring screaming no my mother still. After entering the magic tower, it was a wild dream. When Russell was expelled from the academy before registering to join the magic tower. Russell was extremely scared and worried at that time. The people in the tower said I failed three subjects, which is unprecedented at the academy. I may be good at theory but I can't reach the second round of magic. You won't be able to stand the magic that narrows the flow of mana, so why don't you choose another path other than a mage? Russell thought to himself to narrow the mana circle. Because I was born with a narrow and weak mana flow, I couldn't absorb too much mana and couldn't release mana, which was the cruelest punishment a mage could receive. At that time, Russell seemed very desperate. Russell sat outside with the others, anyway, after an encounter as a mercenary, I actually reached the second magic circle. Russell looked at his hand but he was still just a third-rate magician. A person walked out from inside the door. That person announced that today's temporary job registration process has ended, please come back tomorrow. Everyone outside is upset, we've been waiting all day, there's nothing we can do about that other person, but we can't ask for anything. Russell was silent and thoughtful. Everyone got up and went home and said to each other that they heard that the museum is recruiting temporary magicians to come try it out, what are you talking about? They're just looking for the first magic circle guys to clean up. Everyone gradually left and didn't come, it would only cause humiliation. Russell alone was still sitting in the same place. Russell is helpless ha. Huh? Then he rummaged around looking for something in his pocket. In Russell's pocket was a yellow coin. Then Russell decided to go to the Louvrium Museum. In the lobby of the museum, the introduction said this was the largest museum in the kingdom. The introduction continues this week we have nobles visiting. So this place must be spotlessly clean. Russell seemed a bit uncomfortable. The person at the museum took Russell some people along and said please be careful when using the wind to clean up if people damage anything. The man turned around and warned to prepare for the consequences. Russell looked at the items on display and thought these were all fake, what's so bad about it? Russell and everyone continued to enter. Then suddenly saw something. Russell looked up at a room, this place looked very familiar. It's the magical creature's room. Russell knocked land looked closely at the magical creature. Russell suddenly felt something strange. The ring in his pocket suddenly vibrated. Russell wondered why it suddenly vibrated. Then he took out that ring. Russell looked at the ring in surprise, it was his mother's ring. Russell looked into the magical creature's room again. His expression was full of indignation. Russell walked over and opened the door, his feet moving automatically as if being pulled by fate. Russell walked into the room, the other said, why is there one person missing? Russell, Russell Raymond, the person at the museum shouted loudly. When entering the room, Russell saw a dragon skeleton. Then he looked again and accepted that it was vibrating stronger in his hand. Russell secretly thought, mom, what do you want to say to me, please say it. 
Then he started to close his eyes. Russell remembers when he was little, his mother took him here. At that time, he happily held his mother's hand and walked away. I suddenly had a surprise when I saw something. Russell pointed to a spot. Russell suddenly regained consciousness and opened his eyes. He continued to go somewhere else. And saw the caveman dragon's heart in a box. Russell continued to look at the ring in his hand. Russell seemed to guess something. Dragon heart. Russell stood in front of a box and a ring that looked like a dragon's eye. Russell put the ring on his finger, why did his mother cry? Why did you bring me there? When Russell put it on his finger, the ring stopped vibrating. In the room is a dragon heart. And a cactus. Russell stood thoughtfully looking at the ring in his hand. Russell suddenly laughed, probably just imagining it. Your eyes are five notes in the ring, that's right. The ring on his finger suddenly emitted light. Heart and eyes meet, opening another pair of eyes. A copperhead suddenly appeared. Its eyes looked fiercely at Russell, who said he was qualified to become a new legend. Russell looked at the dragon bewilderedly, I will give you another chance, the dragon continued. That was the moment Russell realized the wheel of fate had broken and the life he had been waiting for had begun. A notification pops up saying the Holy Dragon King's eye is checking world information. Please continue to inform us that winner Russell Raymond's status in quest window is active. The muffled calls of Raymond, Raymond. Russell was confused about what this sound was, it sounded so angry but I recognized it, whose voice was this? A straightforward and early read by Russell. Russell stood up reluctantly. The teacher said I know you have good grades but how dare you dare to sleep in my class. Russell was stunned and didn't know what was going on. He surprised Professor Hubert. Russell opened his eyes wide, but he had already passed away. The student above turned down, what's wrong with him? Russell looked around. Everyone looked at him and laughed. Russell had a hard time understanding what was going on. Russell scratched his head in panic. Russell stood up, am I back in the past? Outdoor rays of sunlight shine through the classroom door. Russell stood up to face Professor Hubert. Russell still doesn't believe that we've returned to the past. He turned to look at the professor. The professor stroked his forehead like a student, but he still had to be punished and go out. Then Russell was thrown out of the classroom. His paintings stagger and travel through time. Russell was confused about whether this type of magic could be considered magic. Russell remembered the dragon's words as his other eyes opened. You will become the foundation that continues to create a legendary spirit, so show yourself worthy. For the future of the new mythology I will give you another chance. Russell remembered that they must have said this was another chance. Russell looked at his hand and the ring was gone. Russell stood outside the classroom door, was it my mother who helped? The professor came out and called Russell. He reminded him that sleeping in the middle of class like that was not like a student, Russell bowed his head and said I'm sorry. The professor looks angry, it seems like we need to talk privately, come to my office at lunchtime, Russell still bows his head, I understand. The professor left, so I'll wait for you. Russell raised his head and happily thought about how long it had been since he got into trouble at school again, but it still felt really good. He stood and watched the professor leave. Suddenly someone appeared and hit him on the head. Russell got angry and said what a damn joke this was. There were three tall people appearing and joking around. One night, I was about to raise my hand to hit Russell, who seemed so relaxed, you bastard. A hand stopped him. The blonde guy in the group reminded the professors who were watching. Send him back and say I must have concluded that you copied my work. Russell was stunned, he remembered that it was Coma Ferredric. Coma angrily said if you don't want to die, follow me to the bathroom now. Then the three bullies left first. Russell remembered that this must have happened. Russell suddenly saw the notice board. Escape from being bullied quest sign teaches three class bullies a lesson, low-level magic stone reward. Russell touched the bulletin board, so it was an illusion. The notice board didn't disappear, Russell was surprised, wasn't he? Coma shouted, what are you doing, don't you follow? He continued, you know that running away won't work, right, we're in the academy. Coma smiled evilly, but if you're scared, just try running away. Russell can look at him now. Russell stood there thinking, forget about that mission, first I'll teach them a lesson. 
Russell recalls the countless years he spent living as a mercenary. There's nothing that can compare to the killing intent I felt from the monster before. Russell looked at the three bullies waiting. These guys were just at the child level. The blonde guy said while smoking a cigarette, You finally decided to come in here, you larva. Russell smiled and said yes, of course it's a damn bug. Another bully said this guy was out of his mind. Russell approached the three bullies. One of the bullies rushed towards you without a fist, it looked like you wanted a beating. Russell easily dodged and avoided the punch. Russell leaned closer to that guy. A blow to the stomach, knocking out the bully. The other guy who captured him was afraid to stand there, bewildered. The next guy jumped up angrily at the trash. Russell knocked that guy down with a straight punch to the face. Then he fell to the ground. On the blonde hair with pleasure, ha huh, really? He lost the medicine and said he couldn't use magic, so he learned some cheap martial arts moves. It's true that you can't expect anything more from a collapsed family. The bully puts blue rings on his hands, we can't use magic in the academy. Then he laughed but it seems you don't know, that we can use small artifacts. Send him quickly towards Russell, damn you brat. Russell remained standing still. Russell used his hand to block the bully's punch. The bully's whole body couldn't move. Russell used force to bend the bully's wrist back. The bully shouted in pain. The bully knelt down. Russell said that you have been overtaken by your brothers on the rankings, even your family has given up on an idiot like you, if you encounter a strong opponent, you are slow to dodge, but when you encounter a weak opponent, then the foster immediately bullied them. Russell is angry at a piece of trash like you. How dare you mention my family? I forgot I was scared to look at him. Russell raised his hand to hit me, I said in fear and said wait, hey wait. I lost face and panicked when I heard what he said. Russell turned away and behaved properly from now on. The three bullies were defeated, Russell warned you if you don't want to die. Then he left. Russell sat slumped against the wall of the academy. He put his hand on his forehead to see if he was overdoing it. Russell felt his eyes tired. Russell was startled when he saw the notice board appear again. The bulletin board lists consumable level magic stones. Russell bewilderedly stretched out his hands to receive. A jelly was in his finger. Russell looked at the notice board and wanted me to try this. Russell stared at this edible jelly, don't say I have to eat it. Then he thought, they don't even eat ice anymore. Russell, you guys informed me, but. Then he brought the jelly to his mouth. The notification panel appears, you have absorbed the lowest level mana stone. Russell ate the jelly, perhaps this was also an opportunity for him like returning to the past. Red lights began to appear. Russell was surprised when his whole body was surrounded by a source of power. Notice board that you have now received mana and mana stones. The source of power radiated from his chest. Russell felt uncomfortable. Mana is overflowing. The bulletin board shows that the mana in the magic circle is increasing. And the magic circle is absorbed. Thousands of power was absorbed into Russell's body. Russell breathed a sigh of relief, fortunately he was stabilizing. Russell is happy with this method. I can definitely overcome shrinking the mana flow. Russell thought about the family's downfall. Was expelled from the academy. She became a third-class mercenary magician. Russell is confident that he can change his fate. Russell opened the door to ask permission to enter the office, the professor said come in. Professor Hubert told him to sit down. Russell sat down in the chair opposite the professor, he called Russell. Then Professor Hubert said that today the husband is not like every other day. Russell was worried so he looked. Professor Hubert I asked, are you having difficulty? The professor said while drinking tea, I heard that your classmates are bullying you. Russell happily thought to himself, Professor Hubert in his previous life always helped me to the end, I've always wanted to say this. Russell happily told the professor not to worry. Then he said thank you very much to the professor, Professor Hubert was surprised to hear Russell say that. Professor Hubert said that as a professor, one must take care of one's students. He continued that anyway, the student fell asleep in class so he had to be punished. It won't be easy for the professor to touch the book, write an analysis report on pages 62 to 74 of the elemental research on the worm. This is the part where you also have to struggle a lot. 
The notification pops up again. The task is to complete the assignment assigned by Professor Hubert. The reward is based on Professor Hubert's completion and satisfaction. The lowest mana speed stone reward can be eaten. Russell freely looked at the bulletin board and thought, is there homework from the mission department too? The professor laughed and said why is it so difficult? Russell replied no. He happily said thank you teacher. Russell went back to his room and started studying and doing his homework. Russell feels this exercise is not difficult. In his previous life, because his mana was limited, he studied theory to make up for it. Even though his teacher was an employee, he still continued to study. Russell looked out the window, but this life. There are other things that are just as important as studying. Russell thought back to the time he practiced mana flow. Mana flow is the path of mana movement. Mana is absorbed through the respiratory tract which runs through the mana pathway and accumulates in the heart. Before, he had worked very hard to practice it. Russell must confront dangerous monsters. From the above method we can release mana to create magic. Dharma Circle 1 is fire, it is terrible flames that cover everything. In other words, the stronger the mana flow, the more mana it can collect and the faster it can be released. Russell had difficulty resisting and shielding. The monster quickly rushed forward to attack. But at that time his mana flow was extremely narrow and weak. So Russell was defeated. He hit the rock. Russell suddenly realized something. The rock broke and he fell. Russell thought to himself, did God sympathize with his unfortunate fate, or was this just luck? Russell fell in an unfamiliar place. He had difficulty standing up. Russell looked around, it was a fascinating historical site with two spell books hidden inside. A source of power emanating from two books. Russell held out his hand. He touched the two books, the abundant flow, and the magician's body. Russell started training by running. Abundant flow while training the body which amplifies the flow of mana. Maybe the mage replaces the muscles as part of the mana flow. In other words, the healthier the body, the steadier the flow of mana. Russell felt the strength inside him, when he had an adult body it didn't change much, but now maybe I'm growing so the results will be more obvious. Russell was determined that one day he would overcome the narrowing of the mana flow. The sky turned orange in the afternoon. Russell stopped breathing heavily after practicing, he didn't have the strength anymore. Russell is so tired of wiping his sweat, I guess that's enough for today. The notice board appeared, the abundant flow magic training mission ran 5 kilometers, completed 0, 0.05 over 5 of a kilometers, the speed reward representing the achievements of abundant flow increased by a certain amount. Russell tiredly looked at his friend and announced, he had been silent for a while but now suddenly appeared. Special bulletin board, when practicing abundant flow you can do this task once a day. Depending on the level of abundant flow, running distance requirements will vary. After reaching a certain level of abundant flow, this quest will no longer appear. Russell was surprised at why he was in such a hurry. Then you can smile and I will run, I will run. Russell was determined to keep running, it was very difficult for me to get this opportunity and I couldn't sit still. Russell continued to run using his weak legs. He had difficulty lifting each leg. Russell looked at the three, six-fifths of a kilometer notice board, almost done. Russell put his hands on his knees a little longer. He continued running. Finally, a notification will appear, you have completed the task and the reward will be given to you. Russell was tired and lay on the ground, I couldn't walk anymore. Russell happily looked at the notice board, how do I get back to the dormitory? A person standing in the corner looked at Russell and said, it's a useless effort, Russell Raymond. Professor Hubert looked at the assignment Russell submitted, and didn't expect that he could come to such profound conclusions with just those academic documents. Then he told Russell that he was sure he had prepared this harvest report himself. Russell confidently answered yes, I can take the Malaga oath to guarantee it. Professor Hubert was momentarily stunned by the mana oath, that attitude was too confident. When he said such a sincere oath. Professor Hubert looked at the results, I am very satisfied with your work. Notice board that you have completed the quest and will receive a reward, the lowest level mana stone and a rune of the same size, knowledge of the art of summoning monsters, thanks to the above knowledge you receive the after effect, increases magic power, reduces mana consumption, and temporarily reduces magic casting time. Russell suddenly thought that means the deeper my knowledge, the stronger I become, right, if so, then. 
When Professor Hubert said you did well and you can go home, Russell suddenly called the professor. Professor Hubert looked at him puzzled. Russell said I have a favor to ask you. Professor, I wonder if you want to use the department's library, can I ask why? He continued that the student library already had enough books to meet the students' needs. Russell replied that he had read all the books there. The professor was completely surprised. Russell said yes, I really couldn't believe what the professor said. Professor Hubert said seriously, but even if what you say is true, being able to use the faculty library is another story, we will have to see if you meet the qualifications. Russell is happy, I completely agree. The bulletin board appears one after another, the task complete the assignment assigned by Professor Hubert. Russell was practicing and thinking, but I didn't expect him to let me hold the homework like that, it's just that he's difficult. Russell wiped away his sweat, but the deeper one understood the theory of magic, the stronger they became. Russell secretly thought that he must obtain high-level knowledge in the department library at all costs. Although a bit annoying. He opened the water bottle to drink, but since the reward for completing the quest was a monostone, he could kill two birds with one stone. Suddenly someone called you, Russell Raymond. It's the bully in front, he said I heard that you have mana in you that is punished by heaven, but it seems like you're a training fanatic, my friend has to suffer because of you, that's Anton Frederick. Russell turned around and asked why you guys came to take revenge or something. Anton laughed and said, why don't you be so delusional? Anton continued to say who would want to take revenge on a useless guy like you. Just trample you and you can do it. Anton lifted Russell's shoulder and walked over, see you in class. The other two said to Anton, aren't you planning on giving him a fight now, you idiots here, there's no one to be an audience for us, Anton said. Russell stood there thinking about class. Practical combat magic class, where students are graded based on the results of practice matches. But it is also where I was despised and bullied. Russell was bullied horribly by Anton. Russell thought to himself that he was stupid enough to forget that memory. I'm already prepared. The notification jar displays the quest to obtain the second magic circle, expanding your understanding of the skills you currently possess. Russell studied hard. He practiced nonstop. Complete the assignment assigned by the professor, then there will be consecutive notification boards showing that you have completed the task and you will receive a reward. Russell stood thoughtfully in the room. He looked at the stones he had collected, the mana stones were already there. Russell touched the stones. He was worried about whether his mana was strong enough to control this mana rock. Russell closed his eyes and whispered, I just need to believe in what I have practiced before. Then you ate that rock. Russell stood silently. The mana flow was starting to emit energy. The source of strength is secretly borrowed from Russell. Russell suddenly felt like he was on fire. Must quickly create a flow. Russell thought he would have to determine the flow of mana. He put his hand on his heart. Russell tried his best to turn it around and create a new spell. Russell silently thought if he failed. My heart won't be able to bear it. But I have made up my mind. Then Russell calmly created a new spell. Russell is determined to get it at all costs. The source of power was so great that it went through the window and out. Russell finally did it. Mana flows around Russell's heart. Russell's eyes gradually closed, he cast the second magic circle. Then he fainted. Notice board that you have completed the mission, you will receive a reward. Notice that your knowledge of the fire attribute has significantly increased the magical power of the magic code has been enhanced accordingly, your knowledge of the water attribute has significantly increased the effect of the water magic has been enhanced accordingly. Your knowledge of the water attribute has been significantly increased. Your cradle attribute has increased significantly. Your earth attribute knowledge has increased significantly. Your earth attribute knowledge has increased significantly. The magic power of earth magic has also been enhanced. Your knowledge of earth attribute has increased significantly. Your heart rate has increased significantly, which is enhanced by other competitions. In the professor's office, he said great, I didn't expect you to be able to complete all the assignments I assigned. Professor Hubert is serious okay this is the last question. Professor, please contact me, this question is more basic than the previous questions, a real question. The professor asked which of the four structures that make up magic was the most important. Russell was momentarily stunned. The professor was secretly worried, that's right, I was asking my student a question that I only recently found the answer to. 
Then he slapped the table and said okay, I'll ask another question. But Russell said the answer was. The professor stood looking at Russell, waiting for an answer. Professor Hubert was surprised that he knew the answer. Russell says the answer is. 3. The professor put his hands on the table silently. Then he asked why this game was like that. Russell began to explain what magic was. Magic appears to collect something in the real world using mana. The world classifies this process into four levels. Synchronization where we learn the rules of natural phenomena. Mental image, where one visualizes what has been learned within the mind, constructs formulas to develop visual images, development where magic is realized through formula. The understanding of building and developing can be learned through inner strength and cultivation, however the spirit of influence is not something that can be achieved through effort. Breaking your own limits to reach your free imagination through courage is what determines the level of your spirit. This is a fire, if I think of everyone as an arrow. Then it will become a two-volume magic, a rocket. If I imagine something else instead. Then it becomes something completely different. If your imagination is not limited. Then I can even create things. They don't exist in this world, they're unreal. The professor thought to himself that's right. Russell looked at the fire burning in his hand, like a shadow rising where the sun shines, or freezing. Then he used his hand to extinguish the fire, everything starts from understanding the world. But it ends by overturning the laws of the world. That is the nature of magic. The professor said exactly what I thought. He smiled, the student library is a real, narrow world for him. Notice board signaling that a mission has been completed, right on the first floor of the library for professors, low-level mana stones can be consumed twice. Russell entered the professor's library. He thought to himself that even though it was just the beginning, it was already so vast. It's harsh compared to the student library. Russell looked at the books, holographic ballistic magic, advanced herbalism magic. Russell started looking at those books, they were very practical. Russell was suddenly surprised, and could not ignore mentioning the basic theories of magic. Someone approached Russell. A professor came up and said oh, you're reading a pretty interesting book. Russell was startled. The book was in his hand when it was taken away. Russell asked what, the other person said over here kid. A splendidly dressed professor approached. Russell secretly thought this person was Darius Snow White. He bowed his head in greeting, honored to meet the owner of the fire tower, I am Russell Raymond. Russell looked at her worriedly. She was an eight-circle mage, few in the entire world could compare to her, even though she was over 80 years old, she used a huge amount of mana to maintain her youthful appearance, it is the most evil magic of the Red Tower sect. Durai happily said oh you know me, but why is she here, Russell wondered, then she continued, no need to be so nervous. Durai said I'm just a companion on the same road as you. Russell looked at the lollipop she gave him and wondered if it was me. Russell walked behind holding a lollipop, Daria asked as he walked, how could a student like him get into the professor's library? Russell replied that Professor Hubert had allowed me to enter. Daria smiled and looked back, how stubborn was that? Russell wondered if he was stubborn. Daria went on to say that what you're learning is quite interesting. The mana is extremely pure, the manure mana is also very stable. Daria's eyes lit up, how rare. Russell silently guessed that she realized something. Darius said don't worry. Look, he's not here to lecture you or anything. Russell bowed his head and said thank you. Darius hits the ground with his cane, then. Russell was startled for a moment. She said she would try to develop her abilities to the maximum, then disappeared. Russell looked admiringly, yes, the master of the fire tower. Russell left the library, not expecting to see her here. Russell thought to himself what an unexpected stroke of luck, suddenly said it wasn't Russell. Were the three bullies from Anton's group, one guy told him that coming out of the professor's library, who does he think he is? Anton smiled and said, well, he must have grabbed the professor's thigh, that wouldn't change anything. Anton left, just do your best. He turned his head and smiled, no matter what you do, it's useless. Russell didn't mind what Anton said. To the magic combat class. The first people called will go down to the ring, and choose a student to be their opponent. The teacher will usually choose the weakest student, so that student can choose someone of the same level as himself. 
Russell sat below thinking, in my previous life I was always the first person to be called by name. The other students were discussing that this time it would still be Russell, of course he had narrowed mana veins. Everyone is still talking, Russell please choose me this semester I need to improve my grades, hey choose me don't choose that guy. The professor was silent loudly, now I will choose a student, first. The students below laughed and guessed it was Russell. Said the professor Anton Frederick, surprising everyone. The students don't understand Anton, why is Anton on top? Anton happily walked up. He walked past the professor and said thank you, professor. The professor said that compared to the benefits from the Frederick Merchant Association, this is nothing. Russell looked, I knew it. Anton stomped his foot. He raised his head and said loudly, what are you doing sitting there, come down here. Russell Raymond, Anton called out. Professor Hubert sat in his office and said, if you were planning to come here, you should have told me in advance. Darius said this professor. It's okay. Dariah, some people continued, isn't it a very normal thing for professors to visit students? She asked so you gave a kid named Russell a library access card for a professor. Professor Hubert was worried yes, did he make a mistake? Dariah smiled and said no, it's just that I've never seen something so rare in a long time. Professor Hubert mused that she was right, Russell's narrow mana flow was an unusual condition, even on this continent. Dariah said he was an idiot, Professor Hubert was surprised. Dariah continued that those children had already treated themselves, what did Professor Hubert say? Dariah picked up the cup of tea. She said the boy had already completed the second spell, the professor suddenly had a second spell. At the academy yard. Russell looked at the notice board that appeared in front of him. Mission announcement to win the magic training session, lowest level monostone reward X2, unlock 40 kg space compartment. Russell thought happily, space blocking magic that only the wealthiest mages can use, is the most effective way to store monostones. Anton arrogantly said, you insect, don't you realize what situation you're in, if you want to live, then. He was angry and begged to leave. Russell laughed and begged. Russell started casting magic, what about me? Anton thought maybe that magic was possible. Russell loudly state your position, I will start the match. Anton also started casting spells. Anton was filled with anger, a guy with limited mana flow could still be equal to a second steal, impossible. Anton used the second magic circle and launched a fire attack. Russell was startled when he saw that. Russell raised his hand. Covered his face when Anton attacked him. A professor above said impressively, the boy's incredible abalone shield and took advantage of its tilt angle, to protect himself from the heat of the fire. The professor who was on the same side as the silent Anton, Russell Raymond, this kid is hiding his talent. Anton doesn't believe, can you endure this? Anton is helpless, damn my firepower. Russell has the opportunity, right now. Russell uses two missiles with magic. He quickly advanced to attack. Anton was surprised by Russell's attack, the rocket. Anton tried his best to protect himself, did he really get a second spell? Russell's attack force was strongly directed towards Anton. Anton is scared, damn it. Anton still couldn't believe his eyes. It's absurd, why does he already have a second flame arrow? Russell's flame arrow quickly flew out. The arrows continuously attacked Anton. The professors above were all surprised, but in magic, I'm not sure anymore. The professors looked at the way Russell attacked and said, I don't think it was a twin uncle, perhaps his moving speed was so fast that we thought it was a twin uncle. Anton thinks you only know rockets. Then there is a way. Anton began using the dual fire protection magic circle and special fire resistant magic shield. Russell was secretly glad that he had been waiting for you to use this move for a long time. Anton is still very satisfied, if we counterattack after waiting for his mana to run out, victory will definitely be in our hands. Russell used the seal. A source of green energy rushed towards Anton. Anton cried out in panic, what was going on? Russell used a magic circle and two wind arrows to knock Anton down. Anton screamed miserably and fell down. Look at the way he identified its weak shield and changed his attack magic, a professor said. The professor panicked, is it still the Russell I know? The professors come down. Anton's whole body trembled and he stood up. 
Anton's face was still full of fear. Russell continued to rush to attack Anton. Russell uses lightning. The blow came straight at Anton. Anton was in pain. Russell continued to use fire. Russell rushed towards Anton. A strong blow fell directly on Anton's body. The professor above said loudly, What kind of magic is that? Stop the match immediately. This is not magic, right? Professor Hubert calmly said, Look closely, look at what is protecting Russell. The other professor was startled and looked at Russell. That is, he is using mana like a knight's magic shield. Professor Hubert smiled, I don't know where he learned it, but he knows how to use it. Russell put all his strength into attacking Anton. Russell whispered that you guys have found a way, Russell. Russell focused his strength to attack Anton. Russell caused Anton to fall, causing the field to break. The other students were surprised and couldn't believe their eyes. The professor couldn't believe it either, how did that happen? Professor Hubert looked at the other professor and said what are you doing? Please quickly announce the winner. The other professor quickly said yes. The professor declared the winner to be Russell Raymond. The other professor quickly ran down to the field. He said to Russell, good job you can go now. Russell told that professor it's not over yet. The professor asked him what he meant. Russell smiled and replied according to professional rules. If the winner doesn't want to stop, then they will be able to give it to any other opponent. Upon hearing Russell say that, all the other students were worried. Russell pointed upward and said you were next. The bulletin board shows the quest to win the magic battle. Reward for completing the lowest level Mana Crystal X2. There will be additional rewards if consecutive victories are achieved. Russell looked and said here. Professor Hubert stood in his office and said, 14 consecutive victories. He's also quite clever. Professor Hubert happily thought and talked about meeting once, and realized the potential of Russell's mana. He looked at the teacup, anyway, how could you grow so fast? Professor Hubert thought back to when Russell played. He thought about it thoughtfully. The notice board appears, you have completed the mission, the space bag reward has been unlocked, from now on the rewards will be automatically transferred to the space bag. Russell had just finished showering when he saw a notice board asking, have you received your reward yet? Russell saw a purple space hole, he wondered if the reward was inside the space bag. He put his hand into that space bag. Russell was surprised when he realized something. He was surprised and said this was a star map. The notice board appears, mission 1 go to the location marked on the map and perform the assigned task. When you reach the location the light will cross your path. The reward for passing the concentrated monostone pass x5, save use it after getting the third magic circle. Russell looked at the notice board, wondering how to use it after getting the third living room. Russell thought about the third magic circle, he thought to himself that before the regression, he had tried countless times but had never reached that level, could he still do it? Russell looked at the map in confusion, where was this place, even looking at the map, he didn't know where it was. Then Russell goes to the library, if I can take advantage of the information in the library for professors. He thought to himself that maybe he would find some idea. Russell recommends finding a book, first on the outskirts of the kingdom of Endymion. He turned the next page, next was the Empire Sea Border. Russell suddenly became happy, surely this should be mentioned in the notes about the overseas region. Russell started looking for many books in the library. Russell was disappointed when he read many books, but no place matched the location on the map. Russell left the library dejectedly, he was just wasting his time and finding the place on the map was too much. He thought to himself, now I will focus on achieving the third graph first. When he walked out, the other students saw him and started talking about the last match. Russell was sad that he wasn't hated or bullied anymore. But still a loner. Suddenly someone called him. Professor Hubert came to you and said, please talk to me for a moment. Russell happily agreed, yes. When I got to the office, the professor said it was almost summer vacation. Do you have any plans? Russell, if the professor says it's not yet. Professor Hubert suggested to him, would you like to do a research project with me? Based on your contributions, even your name in the author's section is right next to me, what do you think? Russell picked up the research book, this is it. He was suddenly startled. Professor Hubert asked, Russell, what are you thinking? Russell said, I'm sorry, teacher. 
Russell told the professor, actually, I have my own plans this summer. Professor Hubert did not understand why her husband just said he didn't have one. Russell showed the teacher the book and said, you will have to come to this place. Professor Hubert looked at what Russell had given him to stay on vacation. Maldives. When summer vacation started, Russell also started his journey. He sat in the carriage. Russell felt comfortable in the fresh air. Russell said to himself that it's quite a long way, I have to eat there to be sure. He put his hand in his space bag and took out the jelly, which he found in his stomach. As he drove the carriage for a long time, he was sweating and said, it's really hot in the summer. Russell said strangely. The mana flow started to appear. Russell continued to think that before going to Moldiva, he would get the third magic circle. Professor Hubert sat in his office thinking, how strange. The boy also went to Moldiva, it must be a good thing, she is probably in Moldiva already. At the beach with a glass of fruit juice. Daria is lying in the sun. At Endymion Moldiva Sea, Daria exclaimed that my homeland is always this beautiful. Daria is located by the sea. She thought to herself, how long has it been since I've enjoyed a complete vacation like this? From protecting the empire, then going to the institute to study magic, the fish also educates my students. Daria seems very busy with life at the castle. She stood in front of the students and said 9,6,3. For all magicians, there are three numbers that have extremely important meanings. The students below were all very surprised. The number 9 represents the end of the magical path a person pursues in his or her life. The number 6 represents the completion of the sixth magic circle, and the hardships one will have to go through to become a great magician. Number 3 marks the fatigue of the first page of the book when people begin to walk alone on the path of magic. Daria held the glass of water and suddenly remembered, speaking alone. I wonder if the child is living a good life now. She remembered Russell Raymond, when he was in the library. The carriage driver said, we have arrived, ladies and gentlemen. As I drove the car, I thought I hadn't gotten off yet. Yes, he continued, sir, you can get off the bus now. He shouted it was scared, sir. Russell quickly picked up the bread on the table. He ate quickly. Russell thought to himself that he clearly had enough strength to make himself okay but his mana was too crazy. Russell thought back to the scene of the carriage driver and the person who was so panicked when he saw him faint. Russell drank the water, but he had finally reached it. He put the glass of water on the table. Russell was happy, the third round of magic. I didn't expect that I would suddenly reach my limit in just a few months, before returning. Russell left the coins on the table, but just like this, he still couldn't be complacent. Russell is determined to go further. Notice board showing mission 1. Find the location marked on the map and accept the following missions. When you get close to that area, there will be light to guide you. Russell scratched his head in confusion, knowing he had to find the locations marked on the map, but... Russell stepped outside and heard the voice, Pompeo Volcano Tour, with the most professional tour guide, the offer is only available today. Russell followed the tour guide. When he reached the top of the mountain, the tour guide told a myth that this majestic Pompeo volcano was originally just an ordinary mountain, but it turned into a volcano because suddenly one day a special creature came to reside. Russell raised his head to look. That thing just stayed and changed the nature of the entire area. The tour guide continued, so in this world there is only one creature with that ability. Is the fire dragon. The tour guide jumped up and shouted, Russell thought to himself, I can get away from here. The tour guide said, let's prepare to move forward. The next location was, while the tour guide was talking, Russell slid down from the mountain, the tour guide was confused, he was missing another person. Russell walked down the waterfall. Russell thought as he walked, I'd rather leave behind my reward and my potential for extra romance after the mission. Russell stood looking at the waterfall, precisely because of this. Russell became happier, because it was related to dragons. He looked back at the map. From the map suddenly appeared a light. Russell watched the light fly away. He silently guessed, could this be the light that shows the way? That light penetrated strongly into the waterfall. Russell smiled and said that it was in the waterfall. Russell started the mana transfer test. He created wind arrows from water. Russell penetrated into the waterfall. Russell penetrated into the waterfall, he said, who would have thought that there would be a cave formed from mechanical lava inside. 
Russell and the rules say you have to wait until you reach Magic Stage 3 before you can try, but I don't see any monsters or beasts in here. He started walking deeper into the cave. Russell saw a building, he wondered if it was a traitor. Russell touched the wall, not knowing how long it had been there. Russell also discovered something. You see a place emitting light, here it is, I kept wondering where your home is, turns out it's here. Then he approached that place. There were also footsteps following Russell. Russell was startled and suddenly remembered. Half dead, did I forget my instincts and become a mercenary, I accidentally let my guard down. Russell looked around, I should have realized, that if there were no monsters, beasts or even any sounds around here, it meant that this territory had an extremely dangerous creature, strong repression. Suddenly a Kodomo dragon appeared in front of him. That dragon opened its mouth wide and roared. The dragon's attack caused the surroundings to be smashed. The walls around the dragon's mouth collapsed. Russell quickly flew up to avoid the Komodo dragon's attack. Russell looked down at the dragon, it was a monster that required at least two mercenary teams to defeat. The reader continued to attack Russell, the only thing I could do now was run. Russell started the monoflow test. He used a magic circle with two lightning arrows. I said quickly rushing to Russell. Russell quickly used lightning arrows to launch at the dragon. My husband, the arrow was released and quickly rushed towards the dragon. The hit dragon roared. The dragon's entire body was covered by the lightning arrow that Russell attacked. Russell thought he wouldn't get any time with that move. Russell quickly ran straight to the stone gate. Suddenly the gate is blocked, prove that you are worthy to enter the gate with your mana. Russell stopped in panic, the Duma. The dragon had escaped his attack and continued to quickly rush towards Russell. Russell is blocked at the gate, I can't go through. You come back, if you can't avoid it. Then I just need to create a new one separately. Russell started using the mana flow. He competes in moving magic circles with two rockets. The meteorite on the stone gate began to glow. When he saw that, the dragon's eyes became frightened. The dragon started to lie down and stopped. Russell wondered why he stopped. Taking that opportunity, he used rockets to attack the dragon. The dragon still stood there. The dragon's eyes gradually looked down. Then the dragon collapsed to the ground. Russell was stunned and didn't say what was going on. Russell stood looking at the dragon lying motionless on the ground. In front of the glowing gate, the person has proven himself. A beam of light shines strongly on Russell's body. Russell woke up stunned. He looked around. Russell touched it with his hand and suddenly asked if this was ice. Russell sits in an ice castle, where am I? Is that teleportation magic? I was just in the cave, Russell wondered. He started to get up and walk around. Russell looked at something hanging above. The bulletin board suddenly appeared. Mission announcement 2. Defeat all the ice golems in the area and overcome the fire test. The challenge reward has increased to 5 multiplier. Russell looked back. Golems. The ice blocks began to move. Russell was confused that he had to eat all of these, giant ice golems approached him. Russell started using fire mana. Russell unleashed his moves, this was a bit too harsh. Russell's stream of fire mana shot out towards the golem. The mana flow is similar to that of a golem. Russell speculated that to kill a golem, one must destroy the core inside them. But, the golems remained unaffected by Russell's attack. Russell didn't believe it, I just created the crack. Russell gritted his teeth, saying how hard it was made. If fire doesn't work, then I'll use wind. Russell started using mana with wind. Russell was surprised, what? Russell panicked, can I cast magic? Russell tried using mana lightning. Russell used lightning to attack the golem. Russell thought back, the previous announcement, destroy all the golems in the area and pass the test of fire. Russell suddenly realized, the trial of fire, I guess I can't use any magic other than fire. Russell's leg was hit by golem. Russell leaned against the wall in pain. All the golems advanced, cornering Russell against the wall. Russell's whole body trembled, what a terrible hobby. Russell raised his hand to wipe the blood on his head. He started using the two rocket magic circle. Russell is determined, okay. Russell uses fire on golem, I will do eight. Streams of missiles rush straight towards the golem. 
the golems were attacked by the stream of fire. The jets were so strong that they caused an explosion. The golem had a punctured area in its chest. Russell saw the opportunity had arisen. He used another stronger line to attack the golem, causing the golems to be broken. Russell is still trying to be embarrassed, just now fixing two children. At this rate, I'll create a manga before defeating all of them. Russell thought he needed to find another way. Golem used his fist to punch Russell, causing the ice below to break. Russell speculated that in order to instantly shatter their solid ice, I would need to concentrate all my strength at one point. In the end, the answer is still, density. He continued thinking, first I will run far away to cast magic. And after that, initially with a rocket, along with a formula to amplify it, Russell started building rockets. Then adding will add to it the torpedo simulation formula. Large streams of fire began to appear. And finally, Russell unites all of these. Russell concentrated with all his might. He created the compression formula. Russell tried his best to unite the fire mana streams. Suddenly Golem approached Russell. Golem raised his hand, preparing to attack. Russell shouted loudly, please, please, unite. The rays of fire clustered together. The flow of fire mana causes the ice golem to gradually melt. The ice golem stood motionless and gradually melted away. Russell used fire torpedoes to destroy all the golems. Russell stood there looking at the ice golems. His eyes lit up. The notice board appears, your understanding of minor elements has exceeded the limit, your understanding of semi-medium elements has increased significantly. Russell looked at the sword in his hand, I could feel it, please write your book on par with a level 5 magic circle. Russell gripped the flame tightly, just maintaining the spear consumed a large amount of energy. Russell rushes towards the golem, so I'll fight first. He was shooting missiles towards the golem. Russell used his spear to pierce each golem one by one. The spear in Russell's hand glowed brightly, full of fire. Russell took down the ice golems one by one. Next, there are four left. The flames glowed strongly. Russell took the fire spear and broke the golem. Finally, there are two left. Russell moved to the remaining golem. Russell stood in front of the golem that was attacking him. Russell raised his spear, if only I could take down this guy too. Russell's spear slashed at the golem, causing it to split in two. Now there's one last one left. Russell suddenly looked back. Golem attacked Russell from behind. Russell fell backwards, if he hadn't hit it with his spear, he would have been killed instantly. Russell looked at the spear whose fire was fading, now he only had a little mana left. He held his spear, stood up and walked forward. Russell said, if that's true. Russell tightly grasped the spear. He used his spear to rush towards the golem, this was his final attack. Russell silently prayed, please. Touch it. The spear advanced towards the golem and pierced it. Russell was exhausted and finally destroyed the golem. The last golem fell. Russell looked at the broken golem. Russell's body was full of wounds. As soon as he said he was done, he fainted. Surrounded by golem fragments, Russell fainted to the ground. She announced now, you have completed the mission now you will receive a reward, you have received a low level mana stone, which can absorb double and the lowest level mana stone that can absorb triple is the reward, you will receive another reward, the reward of challenging the king's horn to forget the properties of fire. A horn emitting red light was suspended in the middle of the castle. But the chain holding the horn gradually broke and fell. The horn gradually caught fire and grew larger. The notice board appears, the king's horn is forgotten, the essence of fire. The glowing horn shines towards Russell lying unconscious, the notice board says entering the forgotten king's subconscious to receive a reward. Russell's eyes were full of fatigue. He was hanging by chains in endless space, Russell wondered where this was, the message board popped up one after another, you have received the forgotten king's horn reward, entering the king's subconscious, forgotten to receive a reward. Russell was puzzled, the Forgotten King isn't that the Horn of the Fire Dragon, but is this really a reward, I feel like I'm being tortured. A voice suddenly appeared, one who endured the test of fire and reached the subconscious of a supernatural being. Russell feels pain starting to come up, are these the remaining thoughts, I feel like my head is about to split open. From before the horn the voice continued, I give you the king's fragment. 
the person came out of the forest to suddenly come towards Russell, something. Before stabbing straight into Russell's body. Russell screamed in pain. The horn stuck into Russell's stomach. Russell's whole body emitted fire. He screamed loudly. Voice appears, please use this power. A large area of light emitted from Russell's body. Russell drifted to the shore. Russell opened his eyes and woke up. He stood up. What, where are you? Russell saw the castle, Moldiva. Russell touched his head. What happened there? You notice pops up again. You have absorbed the horn of the forgotten king and reached the limit. The amount of mana beyond the limit that you can absorb is a potential. The general level understanding of the fire attribute has reaches the limit and will become a high level understanding of the fire attribute. Russell clenched his fist. A source of firepower appeared. Russell was surprised, is this my mana, I can almost see how close I am to level 4 magic. Russell breathed a sigh of relief, compared to what he experienced there, the reward was the best. Russell suddenly heard a voice behind him, nice to meet you here, Russell Raymond. Russell spoke loudly about Snow White Dariya. Raya told Russell, I felt a sudden burst of mana, so I came to take the test. And discovered you here. Russell smiled and thanked her, I never thought I would see you here, Tower Master. Dariah looked at Russell and thought, the boy seems to have reached level 4 magic circle in such a short time, his nana is even more pure. The kid is basically a genius. Russell turned down the glass of water and asked, so what brought you to Moldiva, Tower Mistress? Dariah replied, not many people know, but this is my homeland. Russell felt surprised, what is her hometown? Daria drank the water and turned to tell him, yes, that's the reason why I come back here every summer, but Russell, what brings you here? Russell thought to himself, I guess it's too early to tell her the truth. Russell shyly rubbed his hair, scrubbing. He looked excited, I just came here to see more of the world. Daria laughed, he understood, and thought to himself, should I test this kid's abilities? Then tell Russell, do you mind if it's a little complicated? Dariah uses his hands to create fire. The fire enveloped Russell. Russell didn't understand anything. This was the symbol of the fire tower. Dariah happily said, Don't worry, it's something you can do. Russell looked at the notice board, Snow White Dariah's test quest, wished her to fight against the pirate ship at Moldiva port, and pass her test, Monostone level completion reward central. Dariah added, I guess you already realized, but Endymion strictly forbids slavery. That's why we don't allow human trafficking ships to dock in our ports. But unfortunately, there are a few names anchored near Moldiva. Durai took you on the boat, of course I can do this myself. But the purpose of this plan is to rescue the victim and take the ship, it needs a detailed plan. Russell said that so we need to lure an attack, Durai happily caught on quite quickly. Russell pondered again, if the tower master asked for help, then hundreds of magicians will rush in, even barefoot. Russell watched her perform magic, considering how she specifically asked for my help, then. Russell boldly guessed that this must be a test. Daria stopped the boat and called Russell. She said, things that happen from now on might be a bit too much for you. But the path of a guardian will not want to be shared and is not magnificent, Russell suddenly looked at her. Daria continued, this is just another fate for our magicians. Then she stepped out of the boat. Dariah stood above and said, now I will attract their attention, the kid will go save people in the meantime. Russell's boat floated away. Russell thought, the path of a guardian. Mrs. Dariah flew up. She said it's okay so we'll just do it around here. Then he started to perform magic. Go away, kid. The pirates are scared, they're attacking, hurry up. The pirates used arrows to attack again. The leader shouted shoot but the arrows could not penetrate Dariah's magic circle. The pirates were confused, damn it, he couldn't reach her. Dariah started using fire, you bastards, you dare hide in my area. Let's see if your ability is as great as your courage. The pirate suddenly saw flames falling towards him. They suddenly ran out of math, what? The fire spread further and further to the pirates, what did the rain do? The flames began to wrap tightly around the pirates' feet. They shouted in fear, why did it catch fire again? Snow White Darius' flames grew larger and larger. Those are the fires of origin. My uncles burned firewood, the fire spread more and more. Russell started to step onto the pirate's boat from below. 
he successfully boarded the boat without anyone knowing. Russell heard a loud voice and quickly moved. Russell looked towards the pirates, that is. Darius' magic has covered the entire place. The pirates are fighting Darius' fire elves. Russell thought, I can see it existing in the form of a human. The fire is clinging to the pirates. Gradually the flames engulf the pirates one by one. Russell was surprised when he saw that scene, just in an instant. The pirates covered their faces in fear, it had turned into that shape. Russell said come on, it's not the time to be surprised. Russell walked down to the basement of the boat and recaptured the people who were controlled by Daria first. Below the boat, the pirate sitting on guard said, what's going on? Suddenly my heart screamed, Twi Quan is here, we are saved. The pirate used his sword to hit the iron door. If he comes back, no matter what happens, you guys won't be able to escape from here. The sword-carrying pirate said, remember. Russell grabbed the pirate's neck from behind. He started using lightning magic. A source of power attacks the pirate. Russell easily defeated that pirate. Russell thought that as expected, there was no one left above. The hearts inside say to you, you came to save us. Russell suddenly looked inside the place where the hostages were locked. Russell smiled and said yes but, we have to wait until the pirates are gone, it will be safer here now. The hostages knelt down and said, God, you have heard my prayer. When Russell looked around, he didn't know there were people locked up in this small place. Russell was surprised when he saw something. You see the children are also locked up, they are even hotter than this child to be a slave. Russell is angry, you bastards. Other pirates came and said, someone. Those pirates saw Russell. They saw their comrades being killed. The pirate pulled out his sword and shouted, arresting that bastard. The pirates started rushing towards Russell. Russell started casting magic, I'm the one who caught you. He used the red lightning magic circle. A move that causes all pirates to fall. A pirate lying on the ground said, are you a magician? He continued, if the commander came, Russell continued to use the torpedo, not giving the pirate time to finish. Then Russell left for the prison. Russell looked at this cell. The person inside the cell said, are you the mage of the fire tower? Russell uses lightning to create light. He saw the person inside, it was Elf. Elf said, so who is the magician of the fire tower? Russell looked at the symbol on the cloak, oh so it was because they saw this symbol. Russell said no, I am not a member of the tower. The person inside interrupted, anyone can open this door. Russell thought, it's true that I want to open the door for them, but this guy's voice sounds really annoying. Russell always felt uncomfortable inside, even in this situation, he was still like that. A woman inside comes out, stop immediately, be careful with her behavior. That's Elo. Other people in the cell helped Elo out, she said he was not a normal person. Elo stepped outside and looked at Russell who said, possessing an amount of mana as pure as lightning in the dawn, this person. I can feel the scent of spirit from him. The detainee said, aren't they ordinary people, you mean? Elo told them, I can smell the spirit in his body. Russell was surprised and incredulous. Other people also don't believe it, it can't be, the spirit radiates from humans. Russell put his hand to smell, I don't smell anything. Elo said to Russell, the magician of the fire tower. The people they stood looking at Russell. The elf inside the house bowed his head and said, please save us from here. Suddenly everyone said loudly, we beg you. Russell was a little confused, the elf who was famous for being arrogant had changed because of just one sentence from her. Russell looked at Elo, didn't he mention that she was a high-level elf, or something more than that? Russell began using the power of fire to open the lock. Elo inside asked, have you defeated all the female pirates in the boss yet? Russell was surprised, boss. They are still strong, Elo added. More than warriors proficient in magic. Russell looked out the door. Up on the boat the pirates are still fighting the fire dwarves. The leader observed from the deck, the firefight was interesting. It was a person with a bald head, carrying a large sword on his back. The leader began to rush down. He used his sword to slash the flames. Immediately the boss destroyed the fire dwarf. He walked away and said, you guys are struggling forever just because of attacks like this. 
The steel pirates will grow up, the leader will come and you will die, we will tear you into a million pieces. Duraya's observation above is interesting. Duraya jumped onto the pirate's boat. She walked on the boat. All the pirates turned to look at Mrs. Duraya. Around Duraya covered the mana stream. The leader looked at Duraya, are you closing the gap between us? Duraya smiled and said, it seems you are the leader. The leader said loudly, yes I am the captain of this ship, Don Click. Duraya continued, looking for a way to use the aura. Surely you were a former knight, what are you doing here? Don bowed his head, did the famous knight say that he could eat and pay taxes with money? Then he raised his head and laughed loudly, we Click brothers have made a ton of slave traders. Duraya wondered, how are you? Don began to draw his sword. The leader used his sword to rush towards Daria, he said it was now. An attack that passes through Daria's body. Russell was in the ship's hold when he suddenly saw that the side of the ship's hull was cracked. Russell quickly dodged over, it was too dangerous. Suddenly a basket happened. Russell leaned against the prison door, what is this? Russell looked down at the debris on the ground, hurt. Russell created a magic circle to block Don's attacks, he said you could block them. Don walked towards Russell, who was probably also a magician. Russell looked at Don and thought, Aura of the sword, is he a knight? Notice board appears, tough fight, first battle against the sword master, the situation is very difficult but defeat your opponent, reward through medium level 5 mana rock. Elo stood inside and said, be careful, guard. Don, he is the deputy leader on this ship. Don smiled and said, even though he was a magician, he was still just a child with his nose not clean yet. You didn't know them and yet you kicked them out, instead of winning, join forces to finish them off. Don raised his sword and said, I will show you. Russell stared at Don, ready to fight. Russell thought to himself, fire magic has the most extensive damage, if so. Russell decided to use the three lightning magic circle. Don said, use lightning to fight swordsmen. Russell used lightning to attack Don. Don said loudly, you are truly out of your mind. Don rushed out from Russell's magic circle. Russell was stunned, why didn't his attack group have any effect on him? Don calmly said, you can't do anything to me. Now it was Don's turn to attack Russell. Don drew his sword. Russell was surprised, he was not affected by lightning magic. Don used his sword to slash straight at Russell. It was a strong blow. Russell's shield blow. Russell looked at his shield. He placed his hands on the cracks in the shield. Don's sword pierced Daria's body. Don was surprised when all he cut through was fire. Well, Don turned back to look at Daria. Don said magician, why are you so good at running away? Daria looked down and asked, let me ask you a question. Don raised his sword, that's right, but of course not as good as me. Don continued, the dwarf started a fire again. Daria said softly, no this time it will be a little different. Don's expression was confusing. Daria began to create two large flame shapes. Don't be confused, there are two stars. Don continuously attacked the flames, slashing them even more. These fires are the source of Daria, the snow white dwarf. Daria looked down and smiled softly. Don frantically fights with hellfire dwarfs. Don was surrounded by dense flames. Daria closely observed Don. Don shouted in panic. Don's mind became confused, it couldn't be. Why did the tower wizard appear here again, Don wondered. There was an explosion in the ship's hold. A pirate is trying to attack the basement. He was surprised when he saw Russell. The pirate couldn't believe his eyes. Could he have avoided that attack, the pirate thought to himself. The pirate was angry, it should have been cut in half. The pirate observed Russell, he surrounded himself with defensive magic, to strengthen his body. The pirate holding the sword laughed, whatever it was, it was useless, it was just like a mouse stuck in a trap. Elo said in prison, guard. Russell was injured leaning against the ship's wall, knight. I had seen him in my previous life. He killed a group of innocent mercenaries just because he bumped into his shoulder. Russell thought back to when he had met this pirate before. At that time there was a magician. That's the only one who can stop him. Russell witnessed this pirate and that magician fighting each other. The way that person used to stop him was. Russell thought while performing magic. That way is to stack a shield. Onto another shield. The pirate slashed Russell's shield. His sword smashed into Russell's shield. 
The pirate was stunned. How could he block it? From inside, Russell calmly began to cast magic. He used a magic circle with two magic arrows. Russell focused his attack straight towards the pirate. The pirate was hit and he fell down. Russell was injured. His steps were unsteady. Russell coughed up blood. Have I lost too much blood? He used his hand to break the lock on the prison door. Russell told everyone to leave. Elo said thank you guardian. The F also said thank you. Russell told Elo, if you feel good, follow me. Elo thought to herself, this kid. The pirate suddenly woke up. With a face full of indignation, he said, you should have cut my head off. Russell looked at him, I did it correctly. Russell told Elo, please take the arrested people upstairs. Ethel said uncomfortably, you want us to release the humans, Elo said lightly okay guard. The pirate laughed. There was still time to rescue the slaves. The pirate rushed to attack Russell, take care of yourself first. The pirate's sword hit him. Causing Russell's shield to break, he thought to himself that I won't give him any chance to counterattack. The pirate happily laughed loudly. He continuously attacked Russell's shield. Elo led the others out. Ethel took the key and opened the doors of other prisons. Russell endured patiently, just a little longer for everyone to escape from here. Elo says loudly, the guards are all safe. The pirate said, do you think this will work? Russell said with fire, of course there is. The pirate shouted loudly when he saw fire engulfing him. Russell said, now I will destroy you. The surrounding area began to burn, and the pirate continued to attack Russell's shield. He's angry when he can't break the humiliate, what is this? Russell's eyes lit up. The pirate stepped back, the atmosphere around him changed. He was finally ready to take action. The pirate prepares to attack. He planned, then I will stab both men and women. The pirate suddenly froze. Russell creates a spear, unlocking Russell Raymond's origin. That's the long flame spear. The pirate couldn't believe it, what a fire spear. He realized that, no this thing was completely different, this spear was at least a few levels higher than the previous magic he used. Russell rushed forward, creating a terrible light to attack the pirate. On the boat, Don is still fighting the Hellfire Dwarf. Don was frustrated, the more I know, the more there are, but I can't kill them all. My stupid brother, what the hell are you doing, Don said annoyed. Don looked at Daria, if he was here, I would have caught up with that witch. Hellfire dwarves are becoming more and more numerous. Don continued to attack, just needed to stay a little longer. Suddenly, a fire crack appeared under Don's feet. Don looked down in surprise. The fire began to spread quickly. Then a huge fire ripped through the boat. Don collapsed in pain. He shouted impossibly loud. Dariah was also surprised, what's going on? Turned around to look. Dariah saw the people locked in prison coming out, I was so negligent. Let Russell take care of everything. Russell fainted in the basement of the boat. The bulletin board appears, you have completed the mission and received the reward, you have received the mid-level mana stone. The remaining pirates shouted, the leader is down, surround them, the defense ships are concentrated. Daria held up her wallet and smiled. She said we should just think about this. Daria leaned heavily on the boat with his stick. From inside the boat, a series of strips of fire shot out around. The boat continues to move. Elo is casting a spell on Russell. Russell woke up, what happened? Elo said don't move your benefactor. Elo continues to heal Russell, my mana has not recovered yet, so the healing is a bit delayed. Darius stood next to him and said, well done, you defeated the two knights yourself. Russell turned to ask in surprise, I thought I was only fighting one guy, Daria answered that it was actually two guys. Elo said, I owe you. It's a big debt, even though it can't be paid right away. I, Elo, son of the Baklathu tribe, swear by the honor of my ancestors that one day I will return this favor to you. Russell is happy, I am Russell Raymond, I am only doing my duty as a bodyguard. Daria next to him smiled happily, don't forget us, the people of the fire tower, too. Ethel approached and called the tower master. They said, we have finished checking the condition of the prisoners. Daria turned to look at Elo, her subordinates were so effective, Russell thought to himself that they were behaving completely differently than before. Russell called Miss Elo, what did you mean while on deck? Elo wondered, are you asking about the time I mentioned the incense spirit? Daria turned to look at them in surprise. Russell replied yes. 
Elo explained, are you of mixed blood with the dragon race? Russell said, is it a dragon? Yes actually, I have the blood of a dragon, of course it's just like a drop of water in a lake. Elo took Russell's hand, but just a little bit of dragon blood was enough to attract the souls. Elo continued, I can smell a very strong spirit scent from you, that's why I wonder if it's also mixed dragon blood like me. Durai looked at the two of them, the mixed dragon blood was the reason why Russell could grow so quickly. He can become one. Causing chaos in the entire Endymion kingdom, no, this entire continent. The boat docked. Everyone went down one by one. Durai called, Miss Elo. She smiled and said, I'm sure you'll stay hidden until you get all your mana back, right? Elo replied, yes. Durai continued, my mansion is not far from here, if you don't mind you can stay there, I think you can help with Russell's training. Russell was surprised, coach. Elo is happy, if I can repay the favor that way, I'm very willing. Durai patted Russell's shoulder, why don't you want it? Russell smiled and said, of course not, I really want it, Russell thought to himself, the special training of the fire tower master. Durai said to everyone, then please everyone come this way, the luggage will be delivered here soon, everyone say thank you ma'am. Everyone started to follow Durai, Russell turned to ask her, the tower master, is it okay, the new semester is about to start. The carriages are taking everyone to Durai's residence. A series of horse-drawn carriages followed each other. Then they stopped at a large castle, which Durai mentioned. Russell got off the carriage, looked up, and exclaimed loudly. Durai said to Russell, go ahead, don't be shy. Durai then led everyone into his building. Elo has fun, it's truly a beautiful place, thank you Tower Master for your good intentions. Russell suddenly turned back to look. Russell saw the scene, wait, this place. He remembered, he must have come here with his parents. Then Russell stepped forward and asked Daria, my tower master, if he had something to ask. What is Daria turning to? Russell quickly said, this villa was not yours, right? Daria was shy, I thought I stole it. Russell laughed haha, I'm sorry. Russell was stunned when he heard Daria say, you're right, its previous owner was a certain corporation, I just bought it a few years ago. Russell mused, as I thought, this place is one of my family's properties. Durai added, do you want to ask anything else? Russell happily replied no. You looked at the castle, after the family collapsed, I heard it was sold at a low price. I didn't expect that one day I would return here. A week later, Elo was leaving when someone called. I'm here, Elo, Elo told me to hear you calling me. Durai drank the tea and said, relieved, it seemed like most of her mana had recovered. Elo said, it's all thanks to the tower master. Daraha put down the teacup and continued, so what we talked about before, can you help Russell train? Elo was happy, when you said training, you probably meant soul, Daraya replied yes. Elo asked, but where is Russell? Daraya smiled slightly, I told him to go do something else. Outside, Russell fell from the cliff into the sea. Russell fell, splashing the entire surface of the water. He rose out of the water. Russell wiped the water from his face, did I fail again? Before that you had a conversation with Daria, you learned because during the battle with those pirate knights, Daria asked you, I mean what do you think you should do? Russell hesitated, about that. Then Russell replied, distance. Daria stood in front of the cliff and said, yes, in combat distance is very important for a magician. She turned around and said to Russell, looking closely. Then Daria starts walking off the cliff, think about closing the space. Daria's whole body was on fire, she threw herself down from the cliff. Russell looked at that and thought to himself, that's magic that moves time and space, and flashes. Daria stopped and said, from now on, you should practice crossing this cliff with lightning speed. Russell stood still as he listened to Daria, later, it would become a powerful tool for him. The notice board appeared again, the task of learning the flash time-space teleportation spell, mid-level monostone reward. Russell crawled to shore after failing again. Then crawled up the cliff again, quickly, whether the room was little or much didn't matter. I can only learn this magic when I understand its rules, Russell tried again. Russell's whole body was soaked. Russell continued to do it. Until the sun went down, Russell still hadn't finished learning magic or physical strength, Russell said tiredly. Russell is determined, let's gather, think about closing the gap. Russell stepped out. 
Both of his legs were surrounded by fire. As he shouted right now, and jumped down, Daria called out to Russell. Russell's whole body was filled with fire and he fell down. Daria stood above smiling at him. Russell shouted loudly. Daria smiled and said, From today, you will learn about soul wishes. Russell was standing by the fire, listening to Daria continue, Elo will help you. Elo stood next to him and said, I'm glad I could help you. Russell bowed and said, Thank you Ems, Elo. Then Elo started teaching Russell, she told him to slowly close his eyes. Daria sat back looking at the two of them, Elo continued, and imagined something related to fire. Morning, midday sunlight, or campfire whatever. Russell thought about fire, his whole body lit up. Elo was stunned, it was amazing, in the body of a human being there was such pure mana. Elo began to close her eyes and said, I will enter your subconscious, and guide you. Then Elo touched Russell's back from behind. Elo subconsciously took Russell by the hand. Most people don't know, anyone can enter the soul door, whether human or elf or any other existence. We are all born into nature. The purpose of it all will intersect and the doors will open. Daria looked surprised at what was before her eyes. Elo thought to herself, what is this flow in his heart, this is it. Hatred, Elo wondered. Deadly images flashed in Elo's mind about Russell. Elo held her head in discomfort. Elo looked up uncomfortably, what was this flow in her heart? Elo subconsciously led Russell to the cliff in front of the beach. There Russell cried, Elo guessed that it was hatred. No, maybe it was, Elo thought further. Outside, both Russell and Elo's bodies emitted strong light. Daria suddenly looked at them. Daria immediately walked towards Russell and Elo. The emitted light becomes stronger and stronger. Daria took the fainted Russell back to his room. When Russell opened his eyes, she asked him if he was awake. Russell stood up, Tower Master. Russell rubbed his head and asked, What's going on? Russell said it felt like my mana was exploding. Elo opened the door and walked in. Russell asked Miss Elo. Russell asked looking at Elo's injured arm, her arm. Elo said, Benefactor, I'm okay. Russell continued, Is it because of me? Russell sadly looked down, I'm really, really sorry. Russell went out to the tower's garden. Darius stood from his room looking down and asked Miss Elo. She turned around, wondering what exactly happened. Elo recounted to her, horrifyingly, the origin of Mr. Russell's consciousness. When we arrived at the path leading to the soul gate, we couldn't go on. Suddenly there was a strong flow of emotions. Dariah is difficult to understand, the flow of emotions. Elo replied, yes it looks like an emotion of hatred, but also more like an emotion of sadness. Elo thought back to that moment and said, the sadness was so great, I wondered how that day could have been hidden for so long. Russell was standing outside when Dariah called, Russell turned and said yes to the tower master. Dariah came in front of him and said, today we will start a new training. Russell bowed his head and replied, if you say so. Russell suddenly stopped and looked puzzled when Dariah said, let's clean up. Dariah added that Hugh helped the servants in the mansion for a week to clean every corner. Meanwhile, Miss Elo and I will go to the capital. Elo bowed her head and said to Russell, See you next week. Russell bowed his head and replied, Oh yes, you two take care. Daria saw him like that and continued, This is not a punishment. Russell said okay, and thought to himself, I'll clean up and practice refraction in the remaining time. Russell was stunned when he heard Daria say, But this week I forbid you from using magic. Russell started cleaning up the mansion. He started cleaning the hallway. Russell said loudly, I will practice physically while cleaning, I can't use magic. While cleaning, Russell slipped. Then he fell back. Russell also broke a vase of flowers. A servant came and asked, who would clean the house at that speed? Mrs. Daria treasures that vase very much. Russell thought back to Daria's advice, by the way, Russell, about cleaning, you just need to listen to the head maid. At that time, Daria introduced the head servant to Russell. It was a middle-aged woman, with a serious expression. Russell sat on the ground and looked behind him in panic. He quickly said I was sorry. The head servant said, I know you can't use magic for a week. She gave Russell a towel, so from now on, please clean up according to my instructions. 
then she started to stand and watch him clean up, he had to use his hand to support the bottom of the vase. She kept reminding Russell, don't you think the back of that door needs to be cleaned too? Russell tiredly said I'm sorry, the head maid continued, but it seems like you can't see the stains on the floor. Russell continued cleaning in the tower. Russell gasped and sat down on the floor. Russell is tired, like this. Thinking back to the head maid's reminders, was it a kind of mental training? The head servant came to tell you, it's time for lunch, Mr. Russell, come with me. Russell smiled shyly and said, ha ha I'll eat later. The head maid glared at Russell, follow me. Russell panicked, okay. Then Russell went to the dining room. Russell looked around and felt that there were really many people working here. Suddenly someone asked Russell, what is your name? Russell turned around, I'm Russell Raymond. The man asked Raymond unexpectedly. Russell thought to himself, does he know me? Those four men said, he is extremely handsome, has black hair and red eyes. Other people also said, yes it looks so cool. A muscular young man came to pat his shoulder, he looked very healthy, please give me a little, Russell was startled. Last night he patted your back hard, I'm kidding. Russell also smiled back, thinking to himself that this is definitely training, definitely training. Russell Raymond and another person were carrying a tree that seemed very tiring, the two of them tried their best to carry it around. In Russell Rahman's mind, thinking that if I could use a magician's body, I could finish it immediately. In the evening, everyone gathered around the dining table and one person said, Here, take this, good job, everyone. Everyone raised their glasses and cheers rang out in unison. Russell Raymond was holding a mug of beer and drinking the man sitting next to him glanced at him. A punch to Russell Raymond made him spit out his beer. Russell Rahman surprised he turned to look at the man and asked why did you hit me? The man had a stern look on his face, you're still a student, if you drink alcohol, you'll get sick, Russell Raymond looked at the man in surprise. Oh my god I forgot I was still a student I thought I was still a mercenary Russell thought to himself, another man said it's okay it's okay. Another man said, you have to slowly learn to drink, then slowly poured beer for Russell Raymond. The man continued to tell everyone that sitting in front of such a beautiful scene and not drinking is a sin. Russell Raymond and everyone looked at the sun that was gradually going down the mountain. Everyone turned around in surprise when the chief's voice rang out, there was one more crime. The head servant, holding a basket of things, continued to say whether he wanted to drink beer or not, there was something to eat. A man continued speaking, then congratulated the new member, everyone laughed and talked happily. Everyone laughed about talking to Russell. Behind the scenes, he thought as if he wanted to say something. Russell not paying attention, still drinking beer, talking happily. The next morning Russell continued his work. He ate breakfast and talked happily with everyone. At night he lay down on the tile floor. The next day he took care of the flowers with Marquis Strong. Then happily eat breakfast with a loaf of bread. Just like that, he looked at you at the night sky and thought tomorrow will be a week and what is this feeling of dissatisfaction? Someone asked, he seemed to like this place very much. Coming backstage, Russell was startled and turned to hello. The captain asked me how many times a day I was going to say hello. Russell laughed haha I do that a lot I didn't realize it. Head waiter asked why you came here. Russell was confused. Russell looked up at the sky and replied, I remember someone while standing here. The chief said that I heard that mages can teleport, can you go meet them? Teleportation magic is very difficult and even if I can do it, they are in a place I can't meet them, ma'am. The leader said that I thought the magician wouldn't worry about anything, but Russell replied no. The chief turned away and said to Russell, tomorrow is your last cleaning day, please do well. Russell replied yes. The head servant continued, I don't know much about magic, but I think you're a good person. Russell was a bit surprised. Russell as if wanting to say something. The chief smiled and continued, even if you don't become a good magician, you can still be a good student under me. Russell happily laughed, okay, I will remember clearly. Are you back? Tower Master Russell asked. Russell came out to welcome the Tower Master. The Tower Master asked how are you? Miss Elo also asked how you are, Russell. Russell happily I'm fine. The Tower Master turned and said to Russell, come with me for a moment. Tower Master, you've worked hard this week, not Russell. The tower master said finding medicine to restore Elo's mana would take quite a bit of time, the elf's future is very special. 
and I have to check something in the storage vault, and I'm really busy, Russell replied to the Tower Master. Tower Master slowly this place once belonged to the Raymond family. Russell remained silent. The Tower Master continued to Elo and said that in your heart there is a very strong flood and that is why you cannot touch your soul. That waterfall, the Tower Master did not continue to speak but asked Russell, why did he feel insulted when he saw Russell clenching his hands? Or angry, otherwise sad. Russell's eyes were red and angry, it all reminded me of the first time I met her. Russell recalls how he fought alone. Russell's eyes were red with anger. To learn magic, but now that I think about it, he's just a lonely homeowner trying to rebuild his family. Then take this place, the tower master said. Russell was surprised, what do you mean, I'm not giving it to you for free, the tower master replied. Become a battle mage of Hoa Fat and a warrior to protect this country, Russell rolled his eyes. Make a lot of money to buy this place, I said, Russell didn't understand anything. Do you understand, young man, the tower master asked Russell again. Russell thought again about how to address the young man. The tower master smiled and said don't struggle alone. The tower master stood next to her, Russell sat across from Lady Elo across a fire, Lady Elo said the last time I approached the door of the soul I was unable to awaken your subconscious, I will show you the way, with your mana, let's go to the door together this time. Russell nodded and said what if I get hurt again, Elo. Elo happily encouraged me to bring a lot of medicine, don't worry, Russell scratched his head no, that's not what I meant. Then close your eyes and think about it like last time I will wake you up in your mind, Russell close your eyes and listen to the voice of Lady Elo. Elo Russell called out, Elo asked again looking worried, have you seen me? Russell held out his hand, so here comes my pure mana. Lady Eno turned back to tell Russell that everything was still going well like the last time she came here. Miss Elo stopped walking but. This flood is still here, Elo said. It is still very difficult to reach the source, located at the door of the soul Elo said. Russell slowly approaching this waterfall, Elo stops Russell if the day gets closer. Russell raised his hand to cover his face. Russell sat on the ground without saying anything, Elo said just looking at it is dangerous enough. In Russell's mind, countless voices rang out, the academy graduate chose to enter the tower, restore the family, and avenge his father, this is. I'm sorry I can't make this thing disappear Russell said helplessly, Elo help you Russell. Suddenly a voice rang out, Russell, Russell was surprised and called Daria. The maid outside spoke, Russell still felt the maid's voice. The tower master told the maid she wouldn't leave him alone, she replied yes. Russell is like an ignorant person. Images from the past a man patted his shoulder and told him to come with me for a bit. Image of everyone welcoming new members, welcome new members. Image of the maid head I don't know much about magic but I think you're a good person Russell. The image of the tower master telling him not to struggle alone. Russell seemed to understand right, I can't make it go away but. We can jump over there, Russell decided, think about shrinking time and space. Russell stood up and continued walking, Elo called behind him not to come any closer. Russell is determined to be fine, Uck. Even if I fall, I am not alone. Elo was surprised. Flash, Russell screamed and disappeared. Russell shouted quickly. Elo watched without saying a word. My benefactor, you have done it, Elo said. Russell turned around and smiled. A message appears informing you that you have completed the mission and have received the reward of a common level mana stone. Russell standing by the door of light said to himself that he had passed through it, what should I do now? Russell felt a chill run down his spine when he heard the voice, enter the door of light in front of you. Russell was surprised Miss Elo, Elo asked again you didn't expect that right, we can still connect with each other thanks to the mana link. Announce the quest to contract with a spirit summon a spirit according to the instructions of the mixed elf Elo and create a contract in which case the reward is mid-level mana. Russell heard the voice again, put your hand inside that gate, Russell did so. Russell put his hand inside the gate and wondered what would happen. Now it depends on the decision of the Ling News. No one knows what kind of spirit will come here. Maybe the date won't be chosen. Up is, just put your hand out and wait for Elo to speak. The Tower Master looked intently at Russell, lost in his dreams. That's all I can do, if it's too difficult, it's okay if no spirit comes. I won't be sad because of that, a waiting hand. 
the spirit of a fire dragon appeared. Russell thought I am grateful for every moment that brought me here. The fire dragon spirit touched Russell's hand, a ray of light flashed. Russell opened his eyes. Russell was surprised to see a little dragon in his arms. The little dragon said Gur, Russell wonder if this is a spirit. Elo emotionally said that his benefactor congratulated him. The tower master smiled and said that I don't have just one thing to congratulate. Russell was surprised and questioned the fourth magic circle. Russell smiled brightly as he looked at the little dragon in his arms and called Gyarg. Image of Russell jumping over the waterfall. The tower master smiled and said he had overcome his own mental barrier. Russell read the notification announcing that you have acquired new knowledge about summoning stars and thereby achieved the fourth magic circle. You will receive additional rewards, pass rewards, additional rewards, what Russell thinks. The little dragon flew up and cried Gur. The little dragon sat on Russell's head. Mouth Gyar. Elo caressed the little dragon and said I don't think this is an ordinary spirit. She held it up and asked Russell if he was going to name it. Elo say name and I will complete the contract, Russell raised his hand to catch the little elf. The tower master said yes, so let's give it a good name. Russell thought him, red ah red then, bacon. Russell said making everyone feel like they were struck by lightning. Russell say ha ha I'm joking, thinking about their reaction, the little elf sighed. Is Pepper okay? Russell asked. The little spirit happily nodded and kept saying Gyarg, Geyer. The tower master agreed him, it's not bad, Elo sounds so lovely. Russell laughing ha ha thinking Pepper is short for pepperoni, also a type of bacon. So to celebrate tomorrow we will begin the official special training the tower master said, Elo next to me I will do it for you about the spirits. Russell happily held the little elf in his arms, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. The little elf cooed Gyar when Russell told him nice to meet you Pepper. A month later, it was finally time for the towers to choose students. I wonder how many graduates will be selected this year, well, it's basically been decided already. The white tower judge has arrived, and each tower will select individuals to train throughout this semester. Judge Kim Top has arrived, if they are not chosen, then who else will be? The judge has arrived. You're right, so we have to help these new students more, okay? For our sake I mean for this environment, ha ha yes for this environment, Professor Hubert slowly walked over as if he was about to say something. Professor Hubert said that only someone dares to call themselves a student, when they only like a small number of talented students. The judge of the tower has arrived, a hand firmly grasps the door. The practitioners appeared scared. Vermilion Olsen boldly entered. Professor Hubert was startled why he was here. Vermilion seemed to be looking for someone. Vermilion I told myself it probably hasn't arrived yet. Professor Hubert thought to himself that sending him to negotiate with the government means she doesn't want to choose Russell. A light of fire was moving on the road. Russell heard someone talking, Russell was nowhere to be seen. Vermillion seemed to sense something. He turned back to look at the sky. Russell lowered his head and breathed heavily. Russell looked towards the magic tower. Russell startled when he recognized someone. Russell recognized Vermilion. He also saw Russell but didn't say anything. Vermilion turn around and walk away. Vermilion secretly thought that this would be very interesting. Beating him would be very refreshing. Russell goodbye Chief Tower. Elo, Chief Servant thank you very much everyone. Russell told Elo that she hopes she will return home safely. Elo, Elo nodded and said thank you. Thank you, Benefactor. Russell turned to the head maid and said to the head maid I will definitely come back. The head maid seemed startled. Russell continue until then I will be the owner of this place so please manage it well. The chief smiled and said we already know I hope so too. Russell happily said that although it was a short time, he really thanked everyone very much. Chief Tower asked you don't need a car. Russell yes I don't want to be late so I run much faster. The tower leader continued, then on the way back, I had a request to ask of the young man. Can you please forward this letter to Hubert? Russell slightly surprised said yes I will definitely pass it on. Okay, thank you, the tower leader said. Russell put a question mark. Inside a room. Russell sat across from Professor Hubert and said he was lucky to return in time. However, this selection will be quite difficult to help, Professor Hubert told Russell. Because something has just come up that we have to complete quickly Professor Hubert said voir Russell placed one hand on the letter. Russell happily said no professor. 
All I can tell you is, Professor Hubert said hesitantly to Russell. Don't underestimate Ulan's brother, Ulan's brother's image. This selection, Professor Hubert said. He put his hand on Russell's shoulder and continued, you need to be the strongest, not just try your best, if it's you, you can do it. Russell looked at Professor Hubert and said okay, don't worry. The tower selection notification screen shows the overwhelming difference between the levels and receives recognition from the selection appraisal council. The number of recognitions from the selection appraisal round is no more than 10 stone rewards, mid-level mana. In a room, round one of the writing test selection begins. Russell secretly thought that the written test was not that difficult because in my previous life I failed this test many times. If there is anything to worry about, Russell thought to himself. Image of teacher's letter. After this Professor Hubert's trips will be more frequent almost to the point where he won't be able to teach his classes in the academy anymore. And not long after that, the year he was on leave, Professor Hubert passed away. I don't know exactly what happened. That could be a really dangerous mission for a high-level mage in the fire tower. Highest score in the written test Russell Raymond, sounds the same below did Russell get the highest score, kidding, he's really good at studying, so jealous, wow. Russell thought to himself can I stop at professor's death. The second selection round interview test will begin shortly. Come in when your name is called. Russell Raymond, Russell is still thinking I need it and I can have it too. Russell entered the interview examination room. Russell is still thinking because the proof of that is right in front of my eyes in my previous life, I don't remember that Olsen will become the jury of the audition. I changed the future, so I need to join the fire tower and prevent Professor Russell's death. Looking at Ulan on the jury, Russell thought. I need to be recognized here, one of the judges said, when the judges ask, you will have to answer briefly and answer verbally, got it, Russell replied yes. We will start a judge speaking and asking questions to Russell 30 years ago the formula was created by Shaman or Agengong. Russell answered fluently, it is necessary to apply the concept of recycled materials to change the formula. Russell thought, the interview questions are easier than the questions in the written test, but there are other tasks in the test, second round. Judges evaluate. A bright light shined above the jury. That is to withstand the amount of na-na radiating from the selection jury, Russell is right steadfastly not saying. Russell thought that in my previous life I always failed this round but. This time is different, if you change the ratio of ingredients in the medicine, you can get three times the effectiveness. The judge sitting next to Ulan said that boy was amazing, his expression didn't change even in a mana storm. Ulan smiled evilly, that's all. Russell recognized the difference from Ulan. He tried to resist. Ulan is trying to increase her energy, the other judges don't understand what's going on. A judge tells Ulan he is really a crazy tiger if this continues. Candidates can die. But Russell still stood there calmly, everyone admired him for being able to endure it. A judge said unexpectedly. Even the newly appointed professors in charge of clerical work are still suffering. He is definitely a worthy genius. Recognition from recognition from the selection jury nine-tenths. Ulan still trying to increase my energy thinking you're still suffering. Ulan increase energy to the highest level I'll see. Russell remains steadfast and steadfast. Ulan's burning eyes. A judge tapped Ulan's shoulder and interrupted us, we still have many other interviews, so let's stop here, Ulan turned around in surprise. Ulan smiled sinisterly and said something unclear. Russell's hands trembled, thinking that he was about to see something funny, boring new K. The judges lamented that they were alive. A judge said you did so well you can leave, contestant, next. The door closes. Russell sat down tiredly on the chair. Russell thought I think I'm almost there Teo. Russell felt something. Recognition from the jury selection nine tenths, Russell forced a smile that he said this is not enough, ha ha he is not easy. Russell Raymond the voices of the four judges. One person said it turned out to be a candidate that the fire tower master had lost, another said he was a student that everyone wanted to take in, what a pity. Olsen the youngest priest, are you training the army, a judge asked Olsen. Olsen turned his eyes back and asked who was the youngest. The judge standing behind him waved his hand in confusion, I didn't mean that. Olsen turned around and continued walking, the three judges behind him were sweating. In Olsen's mind, he thought about some things he had experienced, the sound of people shouting after someone, stop the newcomer here. 
The urgent voices of the crowd stop. No, there was a crack in the barrier. One person rushes into battle. Ah, scream. Olsen stood there in tatters, weaklings. Olsen thought if they were down, everyone would be down. The judges gathered the candidates to announce that it was time to start round three of the exam. One examiner said this test was in the treasure hunting category. The judge held up a piece of blue mana stone and said that in the dense forest of the hill the contestants must find the blue mana stone. The judge continued, based on the number of mana stones the contestants earn and bring back, the contestants' score will be determined. Russell was right with the contestants, he looked at the contestants and thought to himself, it seems like they want the contestants to steal each other's mana stones. The sound of a judge shouting OK and the contestants lined up. Russell looked at the notice board and said nothing. Russell looked up at Olsen and the judges thought if I can pass this third photo. Will Olsen recognize me? Russell sighed and wondered. The judges' loud shouts began. First, Russell thought and rushed up. While running Russell, I thought I had to do the best I could. Russell was alone in the forest, wondering if he should summon it now. Russell raised his hands, his hands seemed to glow, in his heart he thought he would be angry with him for a while and then it would be over. Russell held Pepper in his arms and caressed him, it's been a long time, Pepper, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because I can't use magic at school, Pepper was in Russell's hand, calling out Galler. Pepper was as happy as a harvest, nodding, smiling from ear to ear, always saying Galler Galler. Russell asked Pepper, Pepper music, can we talk about something, Pepper widened her eyes and looked at him waiting. Russell held up a mana stone and told Pepper I want to find stones that look like that. Pepper sends send stone. Pepper slowly flew away. Russell stood there thinking that he heard people say that spirits in the mana world can sense the energy of magic very sensitively. Pepper turned around and smiled Gower. Russell was happy as if someone had smelled it, huh? Russell let's go in the direction Pepper said so let's go. Russell saw traces of magic on the tree trunk. A voice echoed from inside the house, finally found someone. Inside the house, a person wearing a black cloak was holding a man by the collar and pressing him against the wall, saying the name of the magician, where is the person who made the transaction? The man stammered me I don't know I just sold him some ingredients needed for alchemy that's all I know. The man in the black robe continued asking, what about the alchemy formula? He rolled his eyes and continued, don't you know that this is a heretical ritual? The man thought of strange images and asked in fear why. The one in the black robe pushed the man in the wall. The cloaked man said that helping the cultists was going against the kingdom, the man looked scared and speechless. The man in the black robe continued to ask me again where did that mage go, the man answered me I really don't know. He continued, all I heard was that he was going to follow a woman, and that woman would bring along her disciples. And he will come and confirm the identity of that disciple. The guy in the cloak pulled the scarf over his face and thought, if the price wants to confront her, she's not the only one. Pulling down his scarf, it turned out to be Professor Huber, he seemed worried about both Ussel and Russell, who was also in danger. In his mind, he thought, no, all the test participants are in danger. A contestant was in the forest wondering what the hell mana was, he couldn't use wild magic because that would be exposed. Suddenly, something was moving in the dust. He saw a figure that looked like an animal holding a knife in the bushes nearby, he panicked and wondered what that meant. He launched an arrow attack towards the strange creature. The candidate hesitated as if it made me a little panicked, in my thoughts I wondered if I should ask otherwise. He turned around and ran, thinking to himself, is he dead, after all, this is a competition. Suddenly he stopped and waited. He smiled evilly wondering if that guy might be in possession of mana stones. He slowly walked towards the grass and asked huh. The monster had been behind him ever since, he was scared and asked where he had gone. As if sensing something behind him he turned around. Russell seemed to discover something, wondering about this place. Pepper flew in front, Russell followed behind, realized this place was the center of the jungle, he saw a ball curled up on the ground. Pepper approached and discovered it was there. Russell was surprised and wondered why all the mana was in one place, Pepper looked like he didn't understand Gower. Russell think that's it, then rub Pepper's head, you did a great job, Pepper. Russell purple stone staff but this is a golem core ha. Huh? He looked at the orb and realized it had been destroyed. It seemed like before the golem could be summoned, it was destroyed, the group looked at the ball more closely, wondering who it was. 
Pepper seemed to discover something and shouted angrily Gower. Russell also turned around in surprise. Something rushed in. Both were very surprised. Russell seemed to realize something. Russell seemed to realize something. His whole body was like a halo of fire. He quickly avoided it, wondering in his mind from light magic. The balls of light continuously attacked. Russell quickly dodged. As the attacks hit the ground, dirt and rocks flew away. Russell realized that the opponent was not just one person. Russell is being attacked. Pepper realizes that. It quickly turned back to spitting fire, which startled Russell. He happily nodded and praised the Pepper. It's a good Pepper. Pepper also felt happy and breathing. There were still small flames in his mouth. Russell cast a spell that shot out sparks, his face filled with joy. Sparks stopped the ice balls. Blinding smoke. The smoke and dust gradually cleared. Russell seemed to suddenly realize something. His face looked surprised. He saw the silhouettes of a few people. He raised his voice and asked who they were. Russell said when he saw the Golden Tower judges Tang Tang were honorary students chosen by the tower. Judge the White Tower. Russell, the judge of the Spear Tower, appeared, but he used such dirty and cowardly tricks. The judge of the pyramid shouted to shut up so that a lowly bastard like you would be the one to discover the mana stone first. The Golden Tower judge is sure that we are the only ones who know the location of the mana stone. This is so absurd, a student thought. Pepper flew out, the judge thought it was a spirit. The Spear Tower judge said it was spirit, I understand why he found the mana stone so quickly. Russell Raymond didn't expect that someone would personally hide this high-level skill, one person thought. Russell tilted his head and smiled, there's nothing special about finding a job quickly. Speaking as if I definitely wouldn't find anything like that, the Golden Tower judge looked exasperated. Russell turned around and looked at him, smirking and saying that. That image of the pyramid judge discussing something shady with the professors, I forgot there was some kind of secret transaction between you and the professors, right? The other student looked at Russell who was sweating and thought, this guy is too sharp. Russell turned to look at him, in short, I have no intention of getting involved as long as you guys don't get in my way. The Golden Tower judge angrily used his magic power to rush at Russell, don't fool yourself. Russell used his magic power behind him and the opponent said if it's good, try it and you'll regret it. The Golden Tower judge was startled when he saw how long Russell had gone back. The Spear Tower judge was also startled. The White Tower judge's eyes widened in surprise. Suddenly Pepper cried out, causing Russell and the Golden Tower judge to stop. Russell asked Pepper. He looked in Pepper's direction, confused. Suddenly he realized there was movement in the forest, he thought. Russell suddenly asked this, what did the Golden Tower judge answer? He looked at the destroyed golem stone and asked if the professors who helped them said they would destroy the hacked golem. The Golden Tower judge replied not at all. The judge of the Spear Tower came forward to speak. We also found the subtitles very strange. The judge of the White Tower also came forward. Russell said something without a sound. Russell performed the exercises. The eyes showed concern, saying something is coming. In the sky, birds and dogs flew wildly. An oppressive atmosphere enveloped the four people. A bunch of zombies jumped out. Russell screamed zombie. The commercial judge was worried, why was there a zombie in the inspection area? The White Tower judge was equally scared, it couldn't be. The judge of the Golden Tower also looked scared, didn't he? Everyone is trying to escape, the Golden Tower judge is scared and has to run away. The judge of the Golden Tower trembled and could not speak. There was no way to escape anymore, the four people were surrounded by zombies. Russell performed the technique, a circle of fire surrounded them. The Golden Tower judge recognized a wall of fire. This move belongs to the fourth circle of magic. Russell turned around quickly. From now on, each person would aim in a different direction, and he would deal with the zombie rushing through the fire wall in that direction. Okay. The three judges were bewildered and could not react. Russell shouted loudly, Do you hear me clearly? The three people said in unison clearly. Judge Kim Top thought he couldn't believe that he was planning to start a fight with someone like him. If they really fought, it would have been a big loss, he chuckled. The undead rushed through the wall of fire. Russell thought the fire wall was only a temporary solution. The zombies rushing through the stream of fire were all destroyed. Russell thought, we need to find a magician to control these living beings. We have to find a way out of here. The zombies rushed madly through the fire. 
They were all destroyed by Russell's horde. Russell thinks a zombie. The heretics hunted for forbidden magic and half-set cards that were summoned. In the past, the Tower Master had subdued those guys. So is this tour left over from that incident, what is their intention in coming here? Russell suddenly remembered something. He thought, are they looking for me? The zombies were still frantically rushing through the firewall. No, right now I need to focus on fighting first, the magic they are using is a type of curse. One of its characteristics is that its mana consumption is very low, so the longer the battle lasts, the more disadvantageous you will be. Russell turned around and told the three judges to use their mana properly, reduce their firepower and aim for their weak points. The judge of the spear tower does not say it in a word, the judge of the golden tower is easy to say. The white tower judge said but anyway, the judges will be here soon if we hold out until then. The judge of the spear tower said the judges would not come, the officer of the golden tower was startled, what are you talking about? Russell also said he's right. It's impossible that the judges. Coming from the capital's magic tower, this evil energy source could not be detected. The magic judge said they probably used some kind of trap to erase all signs of mana. Russell suddenly remembered the sign he saw earlier of a trap. The Golden Tower judge was trembling like that, do we have to fight all these enemies ourselves? Reduce size and increase sharpness. The Spear Tower judge uses moves. The Golden Tower judge said damn it, what's the use in fighting using such sophisticated stimulation? The White Tower judge also tried to fight. Even this guy does what he judges the Golden Tower. On the other side, a magician was watching the battle, they were quick try, they had already started saving mana. The kids are imitating that damn woman's student. However, what if they encounter a situation where they can no longer conserve mana, a magician said slyly. Russell and the merchant tower judge noticed something unusual. A buffalo-headed man rushed into the wall of fire. A demon with a hideous beetle rushed in. The four startled people shouted at a troll. The judge of the spear tower cast the move Ice Abyss. Ice attacks attack the trolls. The white tower judge cast a crystal beam of light at the trolls, and the trolls were hit. He seemed unharmed. Mouth jar. He drew his sword and rushed towards Fan Quan Bok Top. He stood bewildered. A light appears origin Russell. Russell threw his flame long spear at full blast towards the troll, the troll was hit. Russell fell to the ground, the troll was destroyed. The magician outside was surprised, what? The wizards were surprised and said to each other that he defeated the troll with just one blow. The judge of the spear tower was surprised when he thought about the magic just now. The magic just now had the same destructive power as a five-round magic. Russell is he really the same student as me? Russell suddenly heard something. Pepper was flying around in the sky, forming a ring of fire. The magicians also noticed the fire circle, that is. So you guys are hiding there, Russell chuckled. He performed magician body techniques. The spear judge looked at Russell and wondered what he was trying to do. Now, Russell holds the fire spear tightly. The angry face held the flaming spear in his hand. It's my turn, so you throw the spear in your hand. The wizards were startled and screamed, we have to dodge quickly, has our position been discovered? The wind chariot Russell's fiery spear rushed forward. A magician cast a spell to stop it. The spear is like a fire that nothing can stop. Burning everything in its path. All turned to ashes. The magician was trying to block the spear. The spear rushed towards them, dragging a pile of corpses with it. A loud explosion rang out. Russell over here wonders if he has taken care of them yet. The magicians who were hit to pieces thought that woman had indeed raised a monster. We kept this trick to deal with the judges. I didn't expect it to end up being used on you. Russell was startled and his eyes widened. Two zombies are capturing two other students. The four people are surrounded by a group of zombies, who are controlling the other players. Professor Hubert, I'm sorry to say this but only judges can enter here, so, the other two professors seem to be in a hurry to explain. However Hubert he was even more urgent, he walked into the place where Olsen was sitting and said loudly, Senior Olsen. Olsen said quietly, the mission is over. Hubert still kept his hurried tone and said, the believers are also coming here. They are chasing Russell, the candidates at the exam side are also in danger. 
Hearing this, the murderous intent in Olson's heart began to rise, most clearly shown by the sound he emitted that made the professor's hearts beat faster. How dare they cause trouble right in front of us? Returning to the place where the competition took place, the heretic who survived Russell's attack was now smiling triumphantly and said, If you move even one finger backslash, then I will kill them all and turn them into my skeleton soldiers. The other guy's threats didn't make the calmness in Russell's mind disappear, he thought, he covered his mouth to prevent him from chanting the spell. If I can't stop him. Even though flash is used. Well, with just one snap of the heretic's fingers, everyone will die. The heretic laughed strangely, he said, so don't try to resist, come out. Child from the fire tower, from this guy's tone to his attitude, Russell also knew that his target was aimed at himself. However Russell can't act rudely right now because the lives of the other students are in his hands. He slowly walked outside. The heretic bared his missing teeth, he said, that's impressive, I can't believe you risked your life to save your friend. In response to that name, Russell's tone seemed to be that of someone who had gone through countless lives and deaths, you, that's it. If you are weak, they will call you weak. If you are strong, they will fear you. Contempt, disgust, jealousy, these guys are only jealous of others who are stronger than them. After hearing these words, the heretic's face suddenly fell, perhaps he did not expect that this seemingly young man could say those words. Maybe you don't understand. I do that. Because a bodyguard's job is to protect everyone. The heretic slapped his face flat with his hand, he chuckled and replied, in a world where the strong hunt the weak, what, a mission, justice. Those are just loud words from weak people. Russell smiled and replied, look at the person who hides behind the skeleton soldiers and doesn't dare to stand up and do anything himself. From behind Russell, the heretic's puppet approached and grabbed his hand, yes, because you want it so. So I will kill you myself, Russell had a scarf wrapped around his mouth, making him unable to speak. The heretic summoned blue flames around his body, each small segment slowly gluing together to form a bone sword. He came closer and said, I'm sorry I can't hear your screams, but I have no other choice. He raised his weapon and prepared to stab straight at Russell. Meanwhile, every word spoke in Russell's head, there was a magic that didn't need to be chanted out loud. And can be done by will, this is the reward when Russell completes the mission. That's a ring, it doesn't look like anything special, just that it emits a small amount of mana in it. And that is the magic artifact, rings. It can transform into a thundercloud when needed, the ring's power will be released and grow with the development of the user. Your death will begin our revenge. This proud heretic had barely even breathed a breath when a thunderbolt struck him straight in the heart, causing his eyes to widen. He didn't understand why the sky suddenly changed so much. Russell is now like a monster made of destructive lightning, in his mind he is destroying all these scum. That light is not dawn but death, the destruction of rage. Rumbling thunder. Swish, swish, bang. The heretic was struck straight into the body by a bolt of lightning. The sword in his hand also made the sound of broken bones. From his clothes to everything from head to toe, he was surrounded by lightning. If it weren't for Russell's summon, I would have thought he was a lightning man. The puppets behind Russell also lay clean on the ground. Surrounding Russell's body was a layer of lightning magic. Russell's eyes turned back. His teammates walked over and smiled at him as they talked and untied him. I can't believe you would think of using a magic artifact in that situation. You're really good. Russell's spirit has now relaxed a bit. He smiled and replied, thank you. Hearing that, the blue-haired student scratched his head shyly and said, we are the ones who should thank you. We must call the judge here quickly. Looks like everyone needs treatment. Russell calmly said, the judges will be here soon. The blue-haired student asked, what, how do they know about this? Russell replied triumphantly, because my friend will lead them. Somewhere, Pepper is using fire to burn the magic formations that the heretics have set up. Every time I solve one problem, it's like a pepper forest wheezing with satisfaction. In just a moment, small sparks of fire appeared on a forest path. How many steps did he think ahead? While everyone was thinking of ways to help other students treat their injuries, Russell lowered his head and looked down. I thought, the ring used more mana than I thought. The heretic's corpse suddenly moved slightly. His body suddenly radiated blue magic, his mouth continuously made sounds, offering, offering to me what I do. Our life, our lifespan and even our death. Only then did the two Russells notice this change. 
From the heretic's body, a giant pile of bones rose. Summon giant skeleton soldiers. Standing in front of the magic waves that this skeleton soldier emitted, Russell also secretly guessed that its power had already surpassed level 5. Immediately, the blue-haired student standing behind Russell shouted loudly, and everyone ran into the forest. Fear from the bottom of his heart began to appear, a student ran away in such a hurry that he no longer paid attention to anyone. His eyes glanced in one direction. What he noticed were those blue mana stones, it's true that he was afraid of death and still greedy. Russell moved the coin forward, causing the other student to quickly ask, What are you doing? Why aren't you running? Russell said calmly, he was aiming for it. And I'm the only one who can hold him off until the examiner gets here. Although he said that, this was the first time Russell had to face a monster this strong, but he had no other choice if he didn't want the other students to die. The blue-haired student's extremely serious expression and worry appeared even more clearly. He thought to himself, he must have run out of mana, what is he doing? How Russell Raymond? The skeleton soldier's arm was raised. One of its blows also makes the ground shake. Russell jumped into the air to dodge, his hand holding a weapon blessed by fire magic, while fighting Russell thought, if he used it alone, he wouldn't be able to block this attack. Just one hit is dangerous. Launched, the weapon was thrown down by Russell with extremely strong force. The last blow caused the bone vase to suffer. Part of its body was burned by fire, which also made it angry and let out a strange growl. That shot hit him but... Too hard. Looking at the bone vase's wounds slowly being healed by the blue magic, Russell said, TSK, it also has the ability to recover, huh? Suddenly Russell saw that the skeleton soldier's actions were a bit unusual. Something on the ground was slowly approaching him. That thing was the skeleton soldier's tail, Russell also reacted very quickly, otherwise that blow would have directly stabbed him and killed him immediately. However, that tail failed to attack once and immediately turned back to point its sharpest part at Russell. Its speed is too fast. He was so angry because he couldn't stop this skeleton soldier, he shouted angrily, damn it. Bang, that attack was suddenly blocked by an ice magic, this made Russell a bit surprised. It turned out that the person who helped him was the previous student, he said, you saved my life. So I can't leave you and run away. The ice spears continuously attacked the skeleton soldier. Scared running footsteps. Currents of emotions began to take hold of these running students. What made them do the actions of one of those cowardly magicians? When he saw the other student suddenly standing back, he angrily asked, Why, why did you guys come back? But no one answered his words, making him angry and scolding him. Is he crazy? I don't care if anything happens to you guys. Cluck. The previous heretic seemed to be seriously injured and was lying on the ground. His eyes glanced in one direction, perhaps. The sacrificial curse, a giant bone soldier. As soon as he saw this scene, this heretic laughed happily and said, Ha ha, it's so worth it, do what you can just to survive alone. They've all gone into hiding. The orange-haired young man came over and was a bit shy and said to Russell, Sorry for being late. Russell was surprised, he didn't think all the students would come to help him. Although it was a bit surprising. But the corner of Russell's mouth also showed a smile of joy. Russell summoned a long flame spear, smiled and said, If you want to fight with me, I won't stop you. But if you want to live, if you want to win, then listen carefully to what I say here. Crack. I will create an opening. You should attack with all your might. Launched, the spear tip rushed towards the bone vase, each layer of flame like a ray of anger. Furious, that attack seemed unavoidable. All the magic cast by the students created different colors. Boom, boom. Part of the skeleton soldier's body was seriously injured. But just like the first time, it's recovering again. Russell's arm was shaking, he clenched his teeth and said, again. Once again, the spear of flame. Everyone had risked staying behind to face danger because of their guardian duties. And for me. So I have to go further. Russell's will right now is no different from a raging solar firestorm. A horn is growing on his head, his eyes have changed from red and white to yellow-brown, the eye color of a dragon. His hand summons spears again. This is the strongest attack that Russell has ever used. The hand holding the spear stepped back slightly to gain momentum. And eyes open wide. Launch! The other students also attacked with full force. 
The spear tip flew away with streams of magic, perhaps also carrying hope, bringing with it the rebirth of a new life. The bone vase was starting to feel scared. But how can I avoid it? Olsen had come close to where the battle took place. A giant skeleton. What are those weaklings trying to do? They should have run away. Because Vermilion Olsen believes that weakness is weakness. If just one person falls, everyone will fall. Long flame spear. Full force. But that day Olsen realized. The group he thought was weak. It is also because they are weak that only one person needs to stand up. Then everything will rise again. Bang bang bang. After taking the full blow, the skeleton soldier's body was not in good shape. From inside the bone soldier, the heretic's eyes lit up. The look on his face was not willing to end up like this, not yet. Everything is not over yet. At this moment Olsen came out. His anger was concentrated in his fists. Overheating. The heretic standing before him did not even resist. Deck, go away bad things. When the students saw the catechist going to war, their mouths were wide open. Because just one simple punch is enough to destroy countless areas of forest. Russell's voice suddenly rang out, catching Olsen's attention, if he was planning to come. You should have come faster. And then because he consumed too much mana, Russell also fainted. Professor Hubert supported him from behind, his voice proud, good job. For the first time, Olsen also smiled, perhaps his prejudices about it had been broken, that's why he was like that. Notice, the judge's approval is absolute, you have completed the mission, you have received the intermediate level mana stone reward. In a magnificent room, looking at this type of architecture, only aristocrats could afford to build it, are you awake? Russell was holding on the bed, his eyes were a bit vague and said, this is. Suddenly he sat up and quickly asked Hubert, are the other contestants okay? The professor smiled and replied, thanks to his students, they were safe. Everyone said that, if game Russell wasn't there, they would all have lost their lives. Russell smiled and replied, well, they also helped me. Professor Hubert asked, but aren't you curious about the results of the competition? As soon as Russell mentioned the results, he said like a child excitedly, oh that's right, the selection contest. The professor replied, actually there are many problems. Since the heretics attacked the quest area, it has become meaningless. In this situation, coordination is more important than competition. Thus all the selection judges have come to a conclusion. In this competition, this team deserves to receive the highest score. It's the Russell game. The words the professor said made Russell's cheeks surprised because he was the leader of the selection exam. In the past, he failed miserably, so his happiness was pushed to its peak. Russell bowed and said, Thank you, teacher. The professor continued, As for the heretics, an investigation has been opened to find out who is behind everything. Soon, we will find the root of all problems. Actually, there is still one heretic, Russell's words surprised Professor Hubert and asked, isn't there only one? Before the battle broke out, that heretic also snuck away. He swore to himself that he would return for revenge and his goal was to target Russell. At this time, Olsen opened the door and walked in, he was holding a bag in his hand and said, it seems like I lost sight of him. Let me see how you're doing. Hubert immediately stood up, his face tense and said, Russell had to rest for a while. Russell also understood that the professor was worried about him, but he didn't want Hubert to be embarrassed so he said, Professor, I'm okay. The two people immediately went outside. Olsen proactively opened his mouth, he must have felt bored when fighting the heretics. Because I have to fight against those weaklings. I think weakness is also a weakness and my thinking has never changed. Russell opened his mouth, I agree with you but. The weak exist. Let the strong become stronger and protect them. And those who are weak, because the strong have protected them, will also try to develop themselves. So no one will be left behind and we will move forward together. Those words made Olsen pensive. He grinned and replied, the answer wasn't bad. Open it, Olsen threw the bag he had been holding until now to Russell. When I opened it, what I saw was a cloak from a fire tower. Olsen said, don't be happy yet. If you want to join the fire tower, you still have to pass one more test if it can be considered an ancient tradition. Please try to force me to leave this circle, you can use whatever magic you like. If you can make me move out of the circle you win. But if you fail, you will have to pay a corresponding price. 
It sounds simple, but Russell also understands why Olsen is so easy. From behind his hand was holding a pink jelly. From the stone also emitted some purple magic, Russell said, don't regret it later. He raised his hand. You yourself said I could use it. Every kind of magic I want. The entire living area was shaken by a tremor. Inside the castle, Professor Hubert, who was walking somewhere, was also startled by this commotion and didn't know what was going on. Outside, Olsen he is trying to fend off Russell's attack, his entire surroundings were enveloped in smoke, fire, and lightning. And the most special thing of all was that his foot was pushed to the edge of the ring. Olsen thought to himself, he was covered in armor no less than level 5 magic. But still being pushed back. Senior, what are you doing? After noticing the amount of mana emitted, Hubert didn't rush to leave his work inside but went outside to observe. Looking at Russell's tired appearance, the first thing Hubert did was to yell at Olsen without fear. He didn't expect that he would pressure Russell to this extent while his body was still recovering. Olsen whistled as if it was no big deal. This is a long-standing tradition of our fire tower. Hubert replied, this is more like the actions of some brats. Hearing this made Olsen's face darken. The old man angrily scolded, What do you mean, young man, I did this to help you instill discipline before living with others. Hubert also refused to give up and responded, If he still needed you to teach him about discipline, then perhaps the academy's pillars would have all decayed. Let me apologize on his behalf, looking at the two of them arguing like two children. Russell smiled and replied, Ha ha, I'm fine. Olsen hum, by the way, since I created this test, the first person to pass it. It's Mr. Russell. Use original magical artifacts. And more. Unexpectedly, he even summoned a spirit. This made Olsen extremely surprised. Honestly, I'm very surprised, Hubert, he probably didn't know, so he couldn't hide his doubts and asked, can Russell summon spirits? Russell had no need to hide this, he summoned the little spirit in his hand and said, yes its name is Pepper. Pepper's sparkling eyes looked at the two people, making even strict people like Olsen say, that's so cute. And finally Russell Raymond here I am. I hope that you will all be guided by the light of mana. Hearing Russell's speech in front of all the students, everyone was delighted and applauded endlessly. The sunlight that shines down not only brings life but also brings hope, a future to all that it passes through. In the hallway of the academy, Russell and Professor Hubert walked side by side. Hubert said, the graduation speech just now was suitable for a top student. Thank you Professor, Russell replied. Hubert changed his tone as he said to Olsen, you are no longer a student, from now on you can call me senior. What Russell did was to be recognized by the fire tower so what Professor Hubert said made Russell very happy and replied, yes senior. Hubert asked, do you have a place to stay in the capital? Russell replied, I'm thinking of finding a small room in the suburbs of the capital. There's no need, stay at my place anyway, I can't go home until my contract with the academy ends. That proposal is also very interesting. Russell hesitantly asked, is that okay? Hubert said, of course I'm making an offer to you. Unexpectedly, I never used the luxury apartment I bought from the master tower. Hearing that, Russell felt familiar in his heart. Returning to the room, Russell is cleaning the house and Pepper is playing with something but it looks very happy. The notification screen appears, congratulating you on graduating from the academy. Special gifts are being sent. A map appeared on Russell's arm. A map similar to last time. Notice mission number one. Go to the location marked on the map and solve the related mission. Looking at the map for a while, Russell said to himself, there's no way I wouldn't recognize this place. A forbidden island where ordinary people are not allowed to set foot. Cool island. There are full of magical beasts there. An extremely dangerous place. To get there you must at least reach the level 6 mage level. Put the map in another space, Russell thought to himself, I'm extremely curious about this sudden chance that came to me. What is the purpose? I didn't expect the forgotten king's horn to be engraved on your body. It simply wants me to become stronger. Or maybe there is another purpose so I try to help myself become stronger. These strange things. And also with this power. I still don't know anything, but the more I think about it, the more confused I become. The only way for strong people is to be stronger than anyone to answer my problem. Russell picked Pepper up and said, but I have to become stronger because after all, I still have a lot of things to protect. Time passed again, on a road surrounded by trees on both sides. Olsen asked, is this your first time coming to the capital? Russell replied, no I've been there before. 
Olsen thought, oh yes this kid is from the Raymond clan and almost forgot. Russell said, senior I have something to ask you, what's going on? Olsen asked. About the mission that Professor Hubert once mentioned. Does that have something to do with heretics? Olsen's attitude is to remain silent. Russell continued, if that wasn't the case then there's no way the professor would have been able to attack them right away. Olsen smirked and replied, you're sharp. That's right, Hubert's mission is to track down the heretical council. But I'm not sure whether it's right to call them councils. The skeleton soldiers were summoned from a skull. Hearing that, Russell said with some anticipation, I also want to help in that mission. Olsen asked, what do you want to hunt down heretics? On the outside, Olsen was jokingly asking, but in his mind, it was hard to judge that he was lying. He has an extremely honest look. Then Olsen suddenly said loudly, Okay, since you're a man, you have to dream big, I'll report this to the Tower Master. Thank you. But only if you learn my magic before reaching the capital, before we could celebrate, the conditions that Olsen gave made Russell's smile suddenly disappear. Its name is Heat Monster. A one-hit kill magic and this is also a right that Olsen gave to the skeleton soldier during that trial. Overheating is a one-hit kill skill that is used by concentrating mana even for just a moment. You can imagine it as if you were using a slingshot, compressing the mana and then shooting it out. Can it be done? As time passed, the two of them stopped to rest right on the side of the road. Then continue the journey, along the way, Russell continuously studied Olsen's career and it seems like he has mastered it easily. Rumble, somewhere there was a big explosion. A rather deep hole caused by a punch from Russell after overheating, looking at this level of devastation, it is difficult for anyone at this age to withstand a full force blow. Olsen observed and thought to himself, it truly surpassed my expectations. Unexpectedly, he could fuse the heat into his own original magic, we have never met anyone with such talent before. After casting, Russell's hand was shaking non-stop, he said, his hand still shaking too much, Olsen came and tapped his shoulder and said, you already know how to use it, but overheating requires concentrating mana at a time so be careful of being counterattacked after using it, Russell replied, if so, it would be very risky to use this move against strong opponents. Olsen grinned and said, it's not always like that, remember the best defense is attack. Like I said, you never know when someone stronger than you will appear. However, the strong often consider the weaker the moment they lower their guard. As soon as he got out of the car, what Russell saw was a long-haired man wearing glasses helping an old man with discolored hair step out of the carriage. The silver-haired man suddenly turned his attention to Russell. And Russell took notice. Going inside the castle, standing next to the master tower, he bowed and said, Thanks to my grandmother, I have achieved the position I have today. The tower master smiled and said, Congratulations on joining the fire tower. But hey! Luckily, he arrived just in time to visit the Tower Master of the Spear Tower. The people the Tower Master said were the two people that Russell had met when he first stepped down. Standing next to the old man is a magician named Alan Page, and the Tower Master is Mr. Hemingway Melville. The Master of the Spear Tower, after a period of silence from the beginning until now, finally opened his mouth. I kept wondering why she chose today to meet me. So as to brag about the student she took in in her twilight years, Master Fire Tower did not hide his pride and replied, of course, and a junior like Russell heard what the two of them said and could only laugh. She said, because this boy is still young, but he is already a hero who defeated a heretic. And honestly speaking of me bragging about my students, what is there for you to complain about, it's true that women can say anything. Russell's eyes were paying attention to the spear magician. In a few years he will receive the title of the youngest level 6 mage, an extraordinary genius. In my previous life, he helped me a lot, I didn't expect that we would meet each other like this. Tang Tang is the master of the tower, the level can be lost, but how can you lose in an argument? The master of the spear replied, well to me, that's nothing to brag about. If you look objectively, Alan's skills will be better. Sitting on one side, Olsen was also very familiar that every time these two people met, he couldn't bear to fight without arguing, so he sat very leisurely. The fire tower master immediately asked, Oh did you forget that this student of mine is younger? The old man on the other side also replied, Before judging, I had already considered that. It's true that strong people never yield to anything, learning to say no is like using their power to oppress the other person, looking from the two streams of mana radiating out, it also shows that these two people cannot be classified as high or low. Alan's arm touched the shoulder of the spear master tower. 
He said, our tower master is usually not like this, but every time he meets you, he shows this childish appearance. Hearing that, the spear master of the tower immediately turned around, his voice was like a three-year-old asking, what? Alan said, you must be remembering your childhood, Alan's master tower said, what nonsense is this scoundrel doing? Alan then leaned closer and whispered, Tower Master, you still have to visit the royal palace today, right? His anger also disappeared after hearing this. Alan he approached Russell and said, I'm sorry for being a bit rude. The first time we met, Junior, the two of them held out their hands to show respect, Russell replied, it's not okay. But, I was a little disappointed. I want to show my magic to two people. Olsen also understands Russell's personality. The tower spear master heard that and immediately put his hand on his body and laughed loudly, saying, How bold! I wonder. I wonder where that confidence comes from. The amount of mana that the master tower emitted was like an endless ocean that was continuously engulfing Russell's body, however, if his is the ocean, Russell's are like little fish that are constantly adapting to the environment. The old tower spear master thought to himself, I didn't expect that there would be something that would surprise me at this age. Fire Tower Master Tower Let's bet together, the master of the fire tower immediately asked, why bet? Five years and five years if you're student. Catch up with the level of our students. I will give you one of my legendary relics, this bet also caused the fire tower master to roar loudly. This also made Russell think, mythical relics, a relic from the age of myth, artifacts that existed through the forgotten age of myth. According to what I've heard, even the weakest relics contain mana approaching the seventh circle. Three years later, the fire tower master's proposal made the other person feel startled. If my student can't catch up to yours in three years, then I'll give you my legendary relic, old man. In fact, the fire tower master tower is not baseless. Based on Russell's lifeline, it's not a problem to catch up and she wants to put pressure on Russell and it's okay to lose one of the relics. The old spearman laughed and said, now he had time to yell back. Just prepare the relics. The bet was made. The master of the tower spear turned towards the door and said, Let's go. That's enough of a friendly greeting. Alan said goodbye to the three of you, so we'll leave here, the fire tower master. The two of them walked downstairs. Alan immediately asked, Is it okay for you to bet on a mythical relic like that? Of course it's not okay. The tower master's words made Alan feel surprised. So please try your best to show it off. What he said also made Alan understand that if this mountain is high, there is another mountain that is higher. He immediately replied, Okay, I will fulfill the role of a senior. Inside the room, Olsen said, the first day he couldn't sit still. Russell also knew his rudeness. He rubbed his head and said, I'm sorry. Ha ha. Olsen told me, you want to help track the cultists? Yes ma'am, Russell replied. Mrs. Daria summoned something with her hand and said, just in time for the spy to inform me. They discovered traces of spears that attacked the academy. Location is in neutral city Sudra. He tried to escape alone. Hearing the tower master say that, Russell thought that Sudra is a paradise for criminals, he chose a good place to hide there. Because he had faced the criminal before, it was easier for him to track him down than others. So you know, that guy must have already set a trap. Do you still want to take risks? Russell pondered for a few breaths. Then suddenly he stood in front of Mrs. Daria, he stood very solemnly, raised his hand to his chest and said, I will complete my duty as the protector of this kingdom. Mrs. Daria took a breath, smiled and said, okay, then you leave tomorrow. I will prepare a teleportation portal for you, don't forget to bring your equipment. Russell thought, luckily she allowed it, this is the first step to prevent Professor Hubert's death. The next morning, the weather today was also extremely wonderful. A horse-drawn carriage is departing. Inside the car, Russell was holding two bottles of medicine. He looked quite confused because this was the first time he was given two bottles of high-quality potion at the same time. Russell thought, she allowed me to do the mission but she must still be worried because I'm just a rookie. While in the car, Russell saw a castle. He was extremely surprised when he saw it. He immediately said, let me down for a moment. Lovrium Museum, Special Effects Room. The reason why he was surprised was that everything started from this room, where he was standing right here. Russell stood in front of a glass cabinet containing the origin of everything. He thought, I kept thinking why the miracle happened to me and then I got the answer. To develop more and protect more people. Suddenly, the heart in the glass cage emitted golden spots of blood light. 
Immediately the notification screen appears, Heart Protection Mission, protect the Dragon King's heart, which is kept at the Endymion Foundation in the capital, the reward is unknown. Announcing the quest to transform into a dragon, awaken the power with your will, and reward three mana stones. Russell thought, so they are also generously giving tasks, the first is the Dragon King's heart. That means I will have to perform in a way that matches the royal items given to me, it's difficult but not impossible. But what about turning into a dragon? It seems that Russell still doesn't have an answer to this issue. However, with just one breath, the problem of roaring is solved, Russell's whole body was burning like fire. A while ago, when he was fighting the skeleton soldier, a similar appearance appeared, but at that time the fight was too intense so he didn't think much about it. Russell found out. That's how my eyes also changed accordingly. It was sunset, in the room, Russell sat on the bed and said to himself, it seems this power broke out during fire training. You have absorbed the maximum of the Forgotten King's horn, mana that exceeds the absorption limit will store as potential. I wish I could control those feelings to my liking. I can unleash even more power by combining heat transformation with dragon transformation, surely the critical damage is close to level 6. The problem is that we have no way to tame it, after all, the power only explodes when we are in danger. I don't have time to practice any more for your mission, and even if I practice successfully, I usually won't be able to do it. While Russell was complaining, Pepper seemed to have thought of something. It immediately pulled Russell's pants leg. But Russell didn't seem to pay attention to it and just kept talking to himself. The person who speaks must have someone to listen, but when Pepper wants to express his opinion, Russell keeps talking, making him extremely angry. It immediately used its own fire to burn Russell, making him stop talking nonsense. Russell sat up and saw Pepper continuously pulling on his shirt. He smiled and asked, you mean you can help me? Pepper let out each dragon sound, expressing the idea that it would help. Russell sat cross-legged. Pepper sat on top. Russell's eyes slowly closed. When he opened his eyes. He is standing in another space, this place is the spiritual world where I first met Pepper. That's right, time passes differently here than outside, it's probably the ideal place for me to practice magic, but I don't have anyone to practice with. Russell glanced behind him. A giant dragon that could be compared to a castle was standing and looking at him. Russell immediately called Pepper. It immediately rubbed against Russell's body to express its happiness. Russell rubbed his head and said, Thank you for helping me but fighting with you is a bit difficult. Before he could finish speaking, Pepper suddenly summoned a strange creature outside that was just as big as it. Russell smiled and said, I'm probably worried for nothing. Strange creatures are slowly moving towards Russell. Russell gulped. He warmed up his body, so please help me. Somewhere on this continent, there is a group of people talking about something to each other. Leader, the evil cultists have left the capital, should we chase them? According to the two people, the man with two scars on his face is the leader of the organization. He held the sword to his waist and said, everyone get ready to go. Jackson, please report back to me, there's been a change in the fire tower. Everyone, please be careful. The leader smiled and replied, don't worry. He is a member that Dariah personally trained and is coming to help. I can't let him take the chance to show off alone. Let's go. Three days later, the room is still glowing. There's someone with an unknown face looking at the blue ball thinking, God of the Fire Tower, he has to come quickly. Sudra reported that the spy sent by the Fire Tower was missing. At Sudra, there were many eyes looking at him with extremely surprised eyes. They kept talking, why is such a brat in Sudra, but these words didn't bother Russell. In the neutral city Sudra. If there wasn't a space gate in the Royal Citadel, it would have taken a while to reach Sudra. But thanks to the image practiced in the spirit world where time stops. It feels like it's been a month since I've been here. The harvest of Russell is also very good. And it is obvious that Russell has succeeded with strengthening spells such as dragon transformation. You have been able to use the dragon's power through your own efforts, the dragon horn will show your level. During the process of transforming into a dragon, the level of understanding of the fire attribute will double. But there are still too many problems to be solved. The spirit beasts are continuously attacking, the magic they release is not cheap at all. And that makes the level of cultivation even more effective. They still don't stop. And Russell's weapon was knocked out and he had to be engulfed by the attack of the two spirits. 
After failing, Russell slammed his hand down and said, damn it was only 15 seconds. Russell slowly stood up again. His condition also seemed to make it impossible to practice any more. Returning to the real space, as he was walking, Russell was stopped by a stick. A bald guy with black skin, he held a stick in one hand and grabbed Russell from behind with the other hand. Hey, you lost your way, huh? If you want I will show you, the words of this group made Russell just smile. Russell grabbed the stick and smiled, oh, what a coincidence, his words made the thugs feel confused. In some building. The guy just blocked Russell's way, but when he came here, his whole face was covered in wounds, perhaps Russell had beaten him a while ago, so he said in a very respectful voice, this place is the yellow wyvern. Wish you have a nice trip. Russell also doesn't want to talk too much about these people who don't know what to do with this job. He immediately went inside, as soon as you entered the door, the waiter spoke and welcomed you. What do you want to use? Russell opened his mouth, a glass of red dark cocktail 37 years old, mixed with Briggs 12 years straight. As soon as he heard this, a customer sitting next to him was surprised that a young man dared to order this, he said, crazy man, are you planning on making a cocktail with an alcohol content of more than 70%? Russell sighed and thought, drinking that stuff is actually deadly, the way this drink is called is the code of the fire tower. The waiter was Mr. Jackson, he immediately thought when he heard that, he didn't expect that the young man was a member of the fire tower. Isn't he still too young, here's your drink, Jackson finished the preparation in just a few basic steps and placed it in front of Russell. Then a layer of magic surrounded Russell. Jackson said, it's soundproof magic, the others can't hear our conversation. I'm Jackson, the mage of the red tower was specially dispatched here, I work secretly as a manager at the yellow wyvern. Russell replied, I am Russell Ray Moen from the fire tower, Jackson suggested going somewhere else to talk and of course Russell did not refuse that offer. So three days ago, the fire tower spies went missing. Jackson leaned against the wall, nodded and said, yes. The last time we contacted each other. The reconnaissance team is approaching the desert ruins. Russell asked, did they get caught in a trap there? Jackson said, they are not the type to act hastily and fall into a simple trap. Russell asked again, do you keep a map showing the way to the desert ruins? When mentioning this, Jackson seemed a bit surprised. Hearing the purpose for which Russell wanted the map, Jackson sighed and said, that place is not a place he can go alone, the ruins where the expedition team went missing, very close to the imperial border and quite dangerous, dangerous. Unless you wait for reinforcements to arrive, hearing that, Russell's state immediately changed because after all, looking at him so young, who would believe it? He immediately released pressure that made Jackson feel like his heart was beating so fast that it was about to explode. Russell said, it's okay if I leave first, Jackson's face was sweating, he thought in fear, I heard that he recently reached the fourth magic circle but. But this magic must be at least level 5, not to mention he can freely and skillfully control it. Jackson immediately bowed and said quickly, I must be a bit impatient. I will tell you the way there. A smile appeared on the boy's face again like that day. Somewhere, light is coming from a hole above. A man wearing a robe, his face was bandaged, leaving only his face and mouth exposed, he bent down and said, according to your orders, we have left a mark. Well, I can already smell the bloody scent of the pursuers. Russell just drank water like a thirsty person dying because the place he went through was completely hot, while drinking Russell, I thought, knowing that, I practiced ice magic more. Damn it's so hot in here. Either way, this place is bigger than I thought. The steps seemed very heavy. There are many paths leading inside. If your mission is just to find the cultists, then just destroy these ruins and force them to reveal themselves. Russell's footsteps suddenly stopped. He stood in front of a building with quite ancient architecture and said, basically we'll have to go inside. They must have set traps everywhere. Already, under the soles of his feet there were streams of burning red mana. Russell used his strength to jump onto the supports and then walk towards the top of the building he was aiming for. Russell wanted to surprise the heretics in a unique way. Russell relies on rebound to break in from above. However, when he was close to contacting the ground, there seemed to be some wind force that made his body seem unable to maintain balance. After a few breaths, the body will be able to balance again. Russell glanced around but he also felt lucky that there were no traps. Russell went further into the lesson and what caught his eye was a painting and on that painting there was a dragon. And the most notable detail is that the young man is holding a very large sword and attacking someone. 
However, when it comes to the battle scene, it seems like some part of the picture is missing. Surprisingly, suddenly someone's voice rang out, making Russell realize that his laugh was also very familiar. Russell also knew this name and he immediately turned his head. At this time, there was an army from both sides surrounding Russell, that guy's voice kept ringing, he said, he didn't expect that guy from the academy to be the one chasing me. Because you came here yourself, I don't have to work hard to find you anymore. To show gratitude, I should give you death. This guy is no stranger to Russell because he is the one who escaped death last time at the selection competition. Russell smiled back, so loudly, but you ran a bit far. Hearing that, the other guy got angry, his eyes were fiery and he said, arrogant Brad. Died, that heretic used the skeleton soldiers to attack him again. The heretic smiled and thought to himself, there were also the bodies of elite soldiers who died on the battlefield, they were much stronger than last night. This place will be your burial site. Not paying attention to how many subordinates there were, Russell immediately stomped his feet on the ground, a layer of fire surrounded his feet. Firewall magic is used, a wall that resembles an erupting volcano. The heretic asked angrily, is that magic again? Russell immediately replied, no, I bet this time it will be different. Russell immediately raised his hand, and ancient words continuously appeared. In time, Russell not only trained him to transform into a dragon, but also strengthens the existing firewall magic. In add navigation magic and all of this creates a new magic, fire wave magic. Looking down from above, the skeleton soldiers did not dare to get close to that burning place. But the fire waves are spreading more and more. And burn wildly. All the other skeleton soldiers had to suffer it. They cannot be avoided even a little bit. And there is only one result, ashes. The heretic witnessed this scene, his face was sweating, he stammered and said, Army, my army, it can't be that easy. Russell stepped out from the smoke and dust, his eyes radiating intense killing intent. The heretic hid in a corner and was scared when he saw Russell walking towards him. He trembled and thought, why him, could it be? In the midst of that fire he used clairvoyance. Damn, it's time to run. But as soon as his intention appeared, Russell was right next to him, his voice rang straight into that guy's head, it was too late to run. Bang, the punch that Russell threw was enough to make that guy unable to resist. This one punch from Russell caused the heretic to fly into the wall and then fall back to the floor. His appearance was extremely pathetic, he repeatedly slammed his hands on the ground and cursed in his heart, damn. Is that all we can do? Russell slowly walked over. He said, surrender and we'll both get out of trouble, how about that? That guy smiled strangely and replied, I can't do that. This soul no longer belongs to me, as if that wasn't enough, I also sold out my entire family. I have given up everything that belongs to me. From above suddenly appeared two figures of unknown origin flying down. They appear as one male and one female and have the similarity that they are that group of heretics. Russell turned his head up in the direction they were coming down. A loud explosion rang out. The people who suddenly attacked Russell were two people, a man and a woman who looked quite young from behind. The haired woman laughed and said, very pretty, stalker. The green-haired guy turned around and looked at the heretic who was so fed by Russell and said sarcastically to him, You must be the bait, the opponent is still that brat girl, TSK TSK, that's really pathetic. The orange-haired girl also followed suit and laughed, her voice mocking him just like the other guy, the look like a dead rat suits you very well, haha, ha. at this moment, that heretic's whole body was shaking, he wanted to stand up but it was basically impossible. It was him, the heretic's words made the two newcomers a bit confused. He is our target, the Fire Tower Master's disciple. Saying this, the faces of this group of people immediately changed, especially the orange-haired girl, she probably made her veins stand out when she heard it, she shouted loudly, do you mean that bitch Dariah? While they were talking, there was a noise where Russell was standing before, and a purple barrier appeared. Turns out it was because Russell used it to stop these two guys' attacks, he said coldly, dirty guys like you. It's best not to mention my master's name announces the mission to fight with the cultists, capture at least one of the three alive or kill them all, the reward is an intermediate mana stone. The blue-haired guy immediately let out a wow sound to express his mockery of Russell. He said, it's better for you to die early. The orange-haired girl's face was filled with an amused expression, she laughed and said, it's true, but that bitch's disciples won't die easily. 
I will kill you, use your body to make a puppet and then make it dance in front of the fire tower door ha ha. Without further hesitation, the blue-haired man immediately took out his weapon, his weapon is like a whip made from coiled ropes and it is quite long, the blue-haired guy said, Xavier, blocking the entrance, understood. All exits to the outside. They were all blocked by bones. Xavier's body has streams of mana converging, she's laughing, she's getting happier day by day. Standing in front of these two crazy heretical opponents, Russell thought to himself, instead of hiding and summoning corpses, they attacked in full force, huh? They are completely different from the opponents we have faced before. Xavier she said, don't you go first, otherwise we will go first, the more hurried they were, the more calm Russell became because they simply didn't have anything for him to worry about, Russell immediately asked the two of them, let me ask you a question. What did you do to the scouts who came before me? When the blue-haired guy heard about scouting, he immediately asked Russell back. Xavier shouted loudly, don't lie to me to buy time, she immediately summoned the ultimate demon claw move. While dodging her attack, Russell was wondering if these guys really didn't know about the scouts. Nightmare Tail, this is the name of the blue-haired man's move, his weapon seemed to form several others, continuously blocking Russell's retreat. Russell hung for an hour. He directly caught it with his hands, but what he was concerned about was what he asked before, maybe there was a case where they were pretending. But whatever the case may be, he will find it with his own strength. Xavier she released her claws screaming, you bastard are you planning on running? Russell raised his arm, a layer of fire covering his hand. The long flame spear had also been summoned, perhaps he really wanted to fight. Xavier's attacks are simply defeated by one of his spears. Seeing that scene, she was stunned, could he block that attack, suddenly the heretic who was injured earlier said, he was injured. The spear crushed the giant skeleton monster. Xavier, she's like a crazy person, every time she mentions anything, she laughs. Her arms were clasped together and raised above her head. The magic she uses is demon claws with a stronger version called dual claws, it forms two giant arms and hands. She immediately clasped her arms and shouted merge. Immediately, something purple gradually appeared. It turned out to be a spear. She said licking her lips, guess which one is sharper. Russell saw that thing but he didn't seem to feel any fear at all. The blue-haired guy quickly said, don't act on your own. But how can someone as stubborn as her listen to that, she thinks it's humiliating to be afraid of a kid. Russell took the spear, his hand reaching behind him. A frontal strike is the use of force to determine victory or defeat. The two tips of the spear touch each other. However, the difference in strength and quality caused Russell's attack to immediately defeat his opponents. The spear went right next to Xavier, making her feel scared. She feels like something is wrong. The whole building was shaken. When she realized that she was no match for the boy in front of her, her arm was burned by fire, and she groaned loudly. Swoosh, her head also fell off by her teammate. Russell was also surprised by this scene. The blue-haired guy said, this idiot told me not to act on my own. Disciple of the fire tower, I am your enemy but I still have to acknowledge you. The blue-haired guy is also starting to get serious about his job. So from now on, I will do my best to tear you apart. The tale of the tornado nightmare, the other guy's weapon created a vortex surrounding his body. It slowly amplified more and more. He said proudly, no matter how good you are, it doesn't matter, if you attack from all directions like this, can you block it? But while this guy was still babbling, from behind, a fire was burning his weapon. He also quickly discovered this point. But even though he discovered it, Russell had already appeared behind him. Russell used his left hand to hold his right wrist. This one of his punches is a combination of overheating in the magician's body, thereby creating an unstoppable attack. The heretic's body directly received it, causing his face to distort completely. Bang! The whole room shook. The heretic was witnessing the fairy battle scene but he was speechless. In his mind, he did not understand what was happening before his eyes. He collapsed with both legs because he knew that they had lost to a kid. He held his head, his body trembling in fear, thinking, I'm definitely dead, otherwise I won't be able to die peacefully. Those bastard teammates after boasting as if they were someone very talented but in the end. Suddenly his eyes noticed the red-pink gem next to the severed girl. He realized it was an artifact, he was scared when he saw it but maybe he wanted to do something with that thing backslash. 
After a few basic moves, the heretic finally collapsed and knelt before Russell, blood continuously flowing from his mouth like water. A weak voice rang out, stop joking around, just kill me. Shut up, answer my question quickly, Russell said, burning with anger. Where are the secret agents? The blue-haired man immediately spat blood out of his mouth. He smirked and said, you keep talking about those damn spies, what the hell are you talking about? When this guy said it, Russell thought in his head, does he really not know? The blue-haired guy noticed that Russell wasn't wary of him. And that was the opportunity to help him conclude Russell, his right hand immediately summoned a dagger. At that moment, suddenly, from a distance, something like a rope was rushing towards Russell. It didn't attack Russell, but directly wrapped around the blue-haired man's neck in surprise. Russell glanced in the direction of the rope. What caught his eye was the sight of the heretic holding the gem, his body seemed to have something very similar to the one the heretic had summoned earlier in the training session, that guy kept shouting, here I offer, here I offer my life, my lifespan and my life too. Russell was startled because this was a sacrificial spell. The blue-haired guy is trying to get out. But he was pulled by that tentacle towards the place where the monster was forming. That guy's words are still speaking, other people's lives, other people's longevity and even other people's deaths. I will dedicate all of that to you. Let me become a part of your power, destroy them all. From the tentacles, sharp parts protruding like blades appear. The green-haired guy was pierced by those things, causing him to only groan and merge into a part of that monster. This monster is a descendant of abomination. With a huge shape, its mouth roared with intense waves of mana. When Russell directly received the waves of mana from the teachers at the academy, he was not affected at all, but in front of this monster, this was a one life or one life battle. Announcement, quest war against cultists quest has changed, all cultists are dead kill abomination, reward is three intermediate mana stones. That monster looked up and then down again. Unlike the previous skeleton monster, this one can even talk, it growls loudly, why? How dare you turn me into this mess? It immediately held out its arm, claw slowly appearing. Devil's claw, this is that girl's move, maybe that monster is controlled by this girl. Russell suddenly remembered now. That was that girl's previous technique. Whoosh, it's getting closer to Russell. And that's his choice. Suddenly, there was an extremely large explosion from outside, causing the surrounding rocks and soil to fly everywhere. Blisters. A flame shot from below into the air. Russell had escaped outside, his hand holding a flame-long spear. Russell slowly walked towards the ruins and said, This idiot. I can't believe he couldn't control his own power and then dug his own grave. As soon as Russell's words ended, something rose from the rubble. The first expression of fear that appeared was most evident on his face. That monster is not dead yet. That giant monster roared loudly. Russell, holding the flame-long spear, had to endure the amount of mana it emitted. The monster's weapon had strings made from bones that were continuously growing. He roared, died and threw those ropes at Russell. I will devour you to the core, the monster's mouth is full of mucus, just looking at it makes me feel disgusting. At this moment, from behind that monster, there was a layer of fire approaching it. Boom boom, Russell while that monster let down its guard and chose to attack from behind. The hem of a young man's shirt is fluttering in the smoke created by the fire. The monster's eyes glanced behind him, he spoke, Ah, there you are. Your attacks have no effect on me. Russell gritted his teeth and thought to himself, he said nonsense, his defensibility is absurdly strong. I need to think of another solution, but that monster didn't seem to give Russell a chance to rest, his chain swung towards Russell. Even if you think like crazy, it's useless. Russell immediately used his speed to dodge. The plan he could think of was to buy a little more time to choose the moment to deliver a fatal blow. The monster laughed and said, that's right, run and tremble in despair before my overwhelming power. Russell raised his head to look, the things that an inhuman monster said to Russell were just nonsense. He immediately summoned Pepper. And of course he wanted to ask for its help. Pepper seemed to be very excited, so its eyes were extremely expectant and its mouth made happy sounds. Immediately, a flame appeared on Russell's arm. He threw it in the direction from above. Then as he approached the monster, the fire got bigger and bigger. To put it in perspective, it's even bigger than the academy at the fire tower, but right now there's no sign of Russell anywhere. 
The monster appeared behind that layer of smoke, but the monster's flesh was only scorched, creating the smell of grilled meat. He put his hands in front of his face and then laughed again. You idiot, do you think this kind of magic can hurt me? Where are you hiding? Russell smirked and replied, here. From above the monster's head, Pepper opened his mouth, making the monster extremely surprised. But surprise also comes with the fact that it has to endure the fire that surrounds its body once. The fire of Russell and Pepper is completely different. If Russell's is industrial fire, then the fire created by Pepper comes from nature. So when exposed to all of it, the monster gets angry and screams, damn fly, at the same time Russell rose into the air from below. He thought, now I have his attention. The rest. Use penetrating energy to overwhelm this move. Overheating combined with the spear's destructive power cannot be underestimated. Pepper immediately dodged out of the way for Russell to attack. Its eyes are extremely interested and very cooperative. The monster shouted loudly, Russell Raymond, stop acting like this and come out here. But his eyes did not notice that Russell was above his head. And when he realized the danger was near, it was too late. Damn, this one hit me straight in the head. The spear went straight into the head, but the monster replied, oh well, it's useless. Russell smiled and replied, I know so now is the real blow. In the air, there is an extremely powerful amount of lightning magic being summoned by Russell. Russell quickly jumped out. Summoning Thunder Giant Thunder Hammer Two layers of magic overlapped each other, pressing down on the monster. Bang! An extremely loud explosion echoed throughout the air. The shock wave spread over an extremely large range. At the center of the explosion, only a lens can see inside now. Russell hid behind the rock and came out. His face was covered in dust so black it looked like he had crawled out of a coal stove. Russell gasped and said, is it over? The smoke cleared away and suddenly something very strange appeared. One dry skeleton. It made a cracking sound because the neck bone showed signs of being broken. The notification screen suddenly appears, announcing that the battle has ended and you will now receive a reward. At this moment, Russell was so tired that he sat down on the ground. This was also the first time he appeared tired like this. Pepper flew onto Russell's shoulder and rubbed his face, making noises expressing happiness. Sprinkle. Clack, 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 the skull slowly rolled. Then it appeared right next to Russell, making Russell extremely confused. Suddenly a sound came from the skull, Raymond, it seems Dariah raised an extraordinary child in his last years. Russell was horrified because the skull was charred black but could still talk. I wonder if this son will be more interesting than his father. These words made Russell really angry. He immediately grabbed the skull with his hand and shouted, Who are you? In response to Russell's anger, the other side's voice replied very calmly, Sooner or later you will know and also how your father lived in the last years of his life. Platform, the skull was broken. His appearance is quite scary keck. It's true that the saddest day is the day it rains. After Russell learned the news about his father, he couldn't hold back. His tears mixed with the rainwater. Russell shouted loudly, answer me who the hell are you, you bastard. Pepper was also sad right now, so he could only try to help Russell regain his spirits by continuously rubbing his hand. The war is over, but... Sometimes it is the beginning of upcoming wars and it seems that no one can predict it. Under the sound of crackling rain, a pair of binoculars is observing. The guy using the binoculars covered his face and mouth, leaving only his eyes exposed, he said, the battle is over. Send the report. In the Imperial Army 2nd Desert, 12th Desert, the tents all have extremely strict guards. The man holding the piece of paper was the Legion leader Viscount Manmartre, he looked extremely arrogant. He waved his hand and said to the guys in front of him, a match between someone who was probably an Endymion mage and a cultist, the victory belonged to the mage, looking at the power, the level of the mage was evident. Must be higher than level 5, listening to these words, they were probably talking about Russell's previous war. Hey military man, hearing the corps commander's name, the military strategist was startled and quickly replied, yes, corps commander. The commander of the Minmartra army slammed his hand on the table and said loudly, how could such a powerful magician come near me without you knowing? The strategist's face was scared, he lowered his head and replied, I'm sorry, but there are no reports of Endymion's high-ranking magicians. The guy next to the strategist suddenly spoke for the advisor, maybe it was a new magician, there were rumors that the fire tower had a new young member. 
If that's the case then he's probably just graduated, there's no need to worry, as long as they don't get close to us then there's nothing to worry about. Minmartra was angry, his two fists pounded so hard that the table cracked, he shouted, these idiots, that guy just graduated above level 5, which means that in the future he may be able to defend Endymion. The other two men immediately fell silent. The name Minmartra held his head in his hands and said with a bitter smile, damn I really don't want it. But there's no other way but to call that crazy guy. The bright sunlight in the desert land. Russell is sitting and drinking water. He thought, I keep thinking about that. Did that cultist really kill dad? Wait I have to focus on the mission first, I have to find the scouts. Especially when. I have a stalker. They must be imperial scouts. If they haven't attacked us yet, their mission is probably just surveillance. Just stood up and suddenly Russell noticed. Someone is approaching. From where that figure suddenly appeared, two dazzling white blades slashed. Russell also noticed, his hands clenched tightly. But before he could do anything, there was a wound on his cheek. Russell quickly dodged that guy's next attacks. He was finally lying on the sand. As soon as he stood up, Russell exclaimed, Aura! Mission announcement, a huge incident, you have encountered an opponent of a level you have never seen before, escape this opponent unscathed, mid-level monostone reward 5, escape conditions. At this moment, Russell suddenly woke up. Because of the name of the opponent he was about to face. That's the name Spandam. This guy smiled and said, I was aiming for your neck. So it's correct to report that you're above level 5. This guy is an imperial assassin sent by Viscount Manmartre to kill Russell. Spandam maniac. Russell remembered that bloodred aura very clearly. Back to the past when Russell was still working for the mercenary team, just because he accidentally bumped into him on the road, he brutally tortured and killed a group of mercenaries and Russell was almost killed too. But at that time, someone was attacking from above the murderer's head. However, because of his strength, sneak attack seems impossible. The eyes of the person who came to help Russell were as cold as ice. Spandam has a hobby of killing, so he is also extremely interested in strong opponents. The amount of mana the two people emitted was almost at the same level. After a while of fighting, this maniac also turned to ice. Even Alan Page, who had taken a step into the ranks of magicians, had a hard time defeating him. In short, he is an extremely powerful enemy. And now Russell has to confront him again but he is no longer the stupid chicken in the past, the name Spandam he slashed with a sword called Phi Hyatt, true to its name, one sword stroke is like cutting out a line of blood. Russell held out his arm. He creates a shield with six times the intensity. Flying blood with impact shield. But it seemed that the shield could not withstand the force of the attack and slowly broke. Russell was extremely surprised. He quickly ducked and dodged, if that attack had happened, Russell would have been cut in half right now. Bang, a large amount of sand was scattered in the air by the slash. Russell thought to himself, how could he be so strong that he could break five layers of shields? How could Alan Page defeat him then? The spandam stared at Russell. His sword flashed a familiar red color again, he smiled and said, it's good, but the concentration of that shield magic is too low. Flying blood, slashing, swishing, swishing. Russell also replied, you have more than enough concentration. Russell's hand summons a long flame spear. He used his spear to slash lines of fire that destroyed the Spandam's attack. Spandam's face looked serious. He laughed ho ho, what is that? You hide so many interesting things. Thank you for your compliment, Russell replied, his hand turning the spear. How can you help me like this? The spear tip was launching at extremely fast speed towards the spandam. The spandam thought, did it still have its original form after being thrown away? Then he immediately slashed out a bloody sword. The two attacks collided extremely fiercely. Spandam he smiled a strange laugh and said, indeed, fighting a magician. It's so interesting, while the other guy was still babbling, Russell came around behind him. His hand held the fire spear tightly. A slash with full force. But the spandam's figure was like a ghost, even at such a close distance, he could still avoid it. Spandam said, you know how to run like a mouse. Russell doesn't understand what's going on. Whoosh, blood flowed. Spandam he licked the drops of blood in the air, he bared his fangs and said, how long has it been since I've been this happy? Opposite, Russell is slowly descending. 
The recent injury made his face look worse and worse, Spandam said, are you injured? Okay I'll wait for you, so. Russell thought to himself, did he strengthen his body with aura? My mage's body can't compare to his, Spandam he laughed and asked, I can't believe that the wound I caused has stopped bleeding. Are the other guys in the fire tower just as stubborn, or is DDoS a condition for joining your fire tower? Spandam's words made Russell suddenly discover something, he raised his head even though he was still injured. Russell asked, what do you mean? Spandam he said, baring his fangs. That guy I met a few days ago was also stubborn like that. Russell hobbled to his feet. Russell's expression was completely different, he asked in a cold voice, so you killed them, is it because of you that the detective team disappeared? In response to Russell and Spandam's words, he only showed a smile to indicate that he did it himself. Russell clenched his hand, he thought, to locate the reconnaissance team, after fighting with him for a bit, I was about to escape but. Beneath Russell's feet is emitting a huge amount of mana. Maybe what he's doing now isn't running away. The only way left is to fight. And ignore the future. The amount of mana emitted from the shield called Spandam, he shouted loudly, when you fought me, did you hide your strength? to see if you can still relax when your body had to endure the pain of being torn into pieces. Russell he looked at the ring that was emitting small lightning bolts. He thought, the cloud ring still hasn't recharged its energy, after all there is only one way left. Spandam he raised his sword and slashed down. Flying like a crazy bloodstream, this move of his seems to create several clones that slash out at the same time. Nearly a dozen flying paths are moving in front of Russell. Stand in front of this unstoppable attack with ordinary power. There is only one option that Russell can think of and that is. Dragon appears. Spandam, when using the blood flying fierce, he had determined that Russell's body would be cut into several parts, but when he saw his attack being broken, he was extremely surprised. Boom, the explosion was like bombs colliding with each other. From that explosion, Russell flew out with the characteristic black and gold eye when using dragon transformation. He had 14 seconds left, the flame long spear in his hand. The original move of the long flame spear. Spandam's face felt uncomfortable for the first time. Because. He finally felt the danger approaching him. The fire was like a snake that grabbed the Spandam. The fire also spread across the surrounding sand. Russell's body fell to one knee on the sand. He lowered his head and looked down at the long flame spear. At this moment, his name Spandam appeared strangely right behind him, his voice echoed in Russell, I don't know what tricks you used. The two people's attacks collided, creating a small explosion. But I'm sure you've temporarily enhanced your strength. The duration of the dragon transformation is 9 seconds. Spandam he dodged that slash. Russell's expression became more and more hasty because when his dragon transformation ran out of time, he would face death. Another earth-shattering attack. However, his Spandam was still completely unharmed, but Russell's time was only 6 seconds left. Spandam said proudly, if that's not enough then that power is useless. Let's end it. Non-blood and complete wind. All the energy was concentrated on the sword by his Spandam. Russell gritted his teeth, his hand holding the spear. King. The tip of the sword and the tip of the spear rubbed against each other, creating a screeching sound. Swish. The tip of Russell's spear stuck into the sand, creating a mark. Boom, when these two people fight, every time they collide, it's like there's an explosion. Russell appeared later in smoke and dust. He looked very tired and the Spandam's blade was flashing right in front of him. Perhaps this battle will fail for Russell, the dragon transformation time is two seconds left. Spandam he smiled smugly and asked, are you done yet? Russell replied, still. Another second, at this moment, Russell's two hands hit the ground, causing the ground to continuously crack. Sixth magic circle. Around the two people, underground it seemed like there was a layer of lava preparing to erupt. Spandam he stood there stunned. Erupting lava. This is fusion. Fusion. Russell knew its principles. But because it requires a sixth magic circle, Russell cannot use this advanced magic. But it starts with small sparks. This magic will cover the entire area in lava. Heaving, Pepper it is trying to fly away from the fire. And Russell gets rid of it, Russell, even though he was extremely tired, still smiled and said, Thank you, Pepper. 
Because Russell's body was not light at all and underneath it was even like lava, a tired look suddenly appeared on Pepper's face. Time passed by, and the magic attack finally ended, leaving behind a piece of blackened sand, Russell and Pepper also went down to explore. Spandam's body suddenly moved when Russell was trying to walk. Cough cough, the sound of Spandam made Russell turn around and look at him. His appearance right now is truly pitiful, his entire body was almost completely disabled. Russell's fist pressed against his head. He asked, do you have any last thoughts? Spandam he was silent for a moment. He raised his head and smiled and replied, really funny. They pushed you onto the battlefield in the name of protecting your country, but they didn't tell you how to get out of this situation. You must kill one person after another. The path that the Guardian must walk is indeed bloody, now I welcome you to walk on that path. After speaking, Spandam he looked at Russell for a moment, his arrogant smile even before his death still appeared in front of him. However, that was also the last time he laughed. Because he is also dead, Russell looked at him and didn't bother to say another word. Notice, you have completed the quest beyond the required level, you will receive eight intermediate mana stones. Where Jackson is working. Someone was telling him under magic, according to rumors, Spandam, an Empire Knight, was acting secretly in the desert. The disappearance of the detectives probably has something to do with him. As soon as he heard this, Jackson's clothes immediately darkened because he knew that Russell was trying to do his duty in that area. He put his hand in his pocket and thought, damn if this is true then the disciple of the fire tower is also in danger. No matter how good he is, if you fight Spandam with him, at that moment, the shop door suddenly opened. A man entered. When Jackson and the other man saw the sword on the table, they were shocked. Isn't this Spandam's sword? Jackson seemed dumbfounded. Russell lifted his hat and smiled and said, please give me a glass of water. When Jackson saw that Russell had no luck, he quickly said, Okay, you can drink whatever you want. At night, Jackson stood in front of the communication ball in his room. He transmitted the sound, Sudra reported that the Fire Tower Scout Warrior was on a mission, Russell Raymond had killed the heretics and Spandam. When this event happened, people spread rumors about Camelot, the capital of Endymion, Russell Raymond, the last heir to the fallen Raymond family. Rumors spread far and wide that he had defeated Abomination, the evil demon's magical beast, and that he had also defeated Spandam, the Empire's knight. Even though I've only joined the Fire Tower for a short time, this rumor is hard to believe, it's met with a lot of mixed reactions. Russell went through a passage. As soon as he returned home, he immediately met his master, including Professors Hubert and Olson. Durai she patted Russell's head and smiled, thank you for coming back alive. That rumor also has some people feeling relieved. The master of the spear in the tower had just read the news when he rubbed his hands and smiled bitterly, saying, Oh my god, this bet is going to be difficult. Alan Page said from behind, This junior is even better than I thought. However, there are also people who get angry and compete, death of Spandam. Is that all you want to tell me? Some people feel anger and hatred, he is the empire's great swordsman, McCry Hughes. His subordinate saw his anger and tremblingly replied, Yes sir. The great sword master raised his sword hand, he stared at it and said, Blood debt must be paid with blood, disciple for disciple's life. Although everyone has different feelings. Extreme indignation. Fear of absolute power. Russell Raymond left a strong impression on their hearts. The great swordsman shouted loudly, Darius Snow White, I will reclaim this debt at all costs. It was evening, the carriage was moving, so you mean. Are those heretics related to your father's death? Russell immediately replied, yes that's right. Mrs. Daria said, there were many records lost during the war. Wanting to understand exactly what happened at that time is very difficult, more accurately, wanting to find the culprit will not be easy. Hearing Mrs. Daria's words, Russell also nodded in agreement, I knew that very well. Suddenly Daria she held Russell's hand and said, but I can be sure of one thing. If we continue to follow the evil cult, we will be able to find the truth, you think so too, right? I and the fire tower will always be by your side to help you. Hearing this from Mrs. Daria, Russell was also somewhat happy, he replied with a smile on his face, thank you, Mrs. Daria. After a short time sitting in the carriage, the driver suddenly stopped and said, we have arrived. So I hope that today you can put your worries and doubts aside and expand your knowledge. Magic Tower Council. 
A magic guild consisting of the masters of more than 20 magic towers exists in Endymion. Two months ago thanks to the feat of defeating Spandom. That Russell can attend this place as Daria's assistant, even though Russell is just a new person at the tower. Just entering the main hall, someone noticed the two teachers and students of the Russell family. The person who came to say hello was an orange-haired man. He was dressed very politely and an old man who seemed quite old politely said, Oh so this is that talented disciple, honored to meet you. Russell smiled and replied, Thank you. At the same time, a certain man spoke, Long time no see senior. The two people who had previously stayed for a long time said goodbye and left. This bald man is the master tower of the Golden Tower. He looks extremely muscular like a gladiator. Mrs. Daria turned to introduce this man to Russell. This is Niccolo Machiavelli, the organizer of today's Magic Tower Council. Russell did not hesitate and bowed to return the favor to the master of the Golden Tower. The master of the Golden Tower suddenly slapped his hand on Russell's shoulder. He seemed to be in a very happy mood and said, Ha 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 no need to be so formal. You defeated that damn brat's disciple. These words from the tower master made Russell skeptical about the relationship between these two people. Darius she explained to Russell, McCry Hughes the great sword master of the empire, the man named Spandam that you killed was his disciple. The master of the golden tower lifted the scar on his eye and said loudly, Wow, when I heard that news, I felt so relieved. Looking at those eyes, Russell could already guess the resentment between the two. Stop bringing up old wounds and prepare for your presentation, didn't you say there was something important to discuss today? The person who comes is the Master Tower and Merchant Tower, Alan Page also spoke from behind, Fire Tower Master, Golden Tower Master, are you both okay? Russell and his master returned together. This is the second time that Russell has met the Master Merchant Tower. As soon as they met, the tone of these two people started to sound like kindergarten kids fighting over candy. The master of the Golden Tower is so familiar with their personalities that he can only scratch his head, laugh and say, then I'll go get ready. Without hesitation, the master of the Golden Tower quickly ran away because he was afraid that if he was caught in trouble, he would be very unlucky. Master Top Tienge Top said, by the way we are talking about this, you don't have the military service to bet on relics from the era of gods among us, Daria replied, of course not. Master Tower Tienge Tower he said proudly, hey my dear Alan first. But before he could finish his sentence, Alan behind him said let's go sit down, master. Then he dragged his master away before his scolding, hey kid, I'm still talking, this brat let me go, witnessing this scene, even someone like Russell was speechless. And it's been a long time since we've seen joy appear on Russell's cheeks. In the conference room, the master of the Golden Tower stood in front of everyone and said loudly, let's start this magic council meeting. The main issue for this meeting is the ruins being excavated at Mount Cabane. At first glance, it seems that these ruins date back to the age of mythology and there are still no signs that the contents have been taken. In other words, the possibility of a relic still intact in there is very high. Relics from the age of mythology, we can find a relic that shakes our contemporaries. So we need your help to capture the ruins. Sir Allen of Spear Tower with Sir Russell Raymond of the Fire Tower, I want to entrust this matter to you too. These words of the Master of the Golden Tower were immediately agreed upon by everyone below. Darai thought to himself, of course, don't you see whose disciple he is? However, there is still an exception, at this moment, a voice rang out and I objected, Mrs. Darai's eyes immediately glanced at the direction the voice came from. Two men, one in front and one behind, the one behind is Jaron the Red Tower Mage, the one in the front is Blaine Trilogy, the Master of the Red Tower. All are silent now. Master of the Golden Tower he asked, can I ask you why? The Tower Master of the Red Tower said, Alan Raymond then glanced at him. Towards Russell. Because he lost. The Red Tower's words were immediately opposed by the other Tower Masters. How can a father lose and blame his son? That's right, the war with the Empire was a long time ago. The Tower Master turned back and said in a cold voice, that defeat caused the kingdom to lose its most talented and elite warriors when he left the war without permission. After listening, the others suddenly became silent. Darai said loudly, it was just speculation, there were no records at that time. The old tower master of the red tower took a step forward and replied, You are wrong. I was there. Both people were suddenly stunned. I saw with my own eyes his escape. This makes Russell not believe that his father ran away. You're leaving tomorrow, right? But how can you do a good job while you're distracted? 
Surely what that old man said still bothers you. Russell picked up the flame long spear. He looked very tired and replied, No master. Durai's eyes looked straight at Russell. She thought to herself, those who praised the boy as a disciple suddenly turned around and slandered his late father as a coward, how could he not be shaken? Then Daria slowly lowered herself to the ground and said, boy, one day the needle in the bag will come out, just focus on walking on your path. Try to walk on your own path. Hearing the teacher's words of encouragement, Russell's arm tightly grasped the weapon. He raised his head and said loudly, master, please teach me again. Mrs. Daria immediately smiled because she was happy. Although that path will not be easy at all, Russell must walk on that predetermined path. Children must step out of their parents' shadow on their own, evening in Endymion Kingdom. Princess Rathmos is mingling with the bustling crowd below, looking very nervous and worried. She turned and looked up. My house once before leaving and smile at it. Three days later at Cavain Mountain, the surrounding space was covered with an extremely dense layer of ice. Russell went through a space portal to get to this place. Just looking at this magnificent but cold scene. It immediately made Russell say a word that was so cold it cut his skin. Poof, Russell snapped his fingers. Immediately the magic warmed his body. Next to Russell, there was a pair of men and women. The man was holding a box and said, the air suddenly warmed up. Not only the two of them, but the people around them all feel warm and what's more important is that Princess Rathmos also came here. At this moment, someone came up and asked Russell, Excuse me, are you Russell Raymond of the Fire Tower? Yes, that's right, Russell replied. That young man put his hand forward and said, We are waiting for you, please come this way. And so Russell followed the guide, constantly observing his surroundings on the way. Royal Highway Golden Tower Eternal Golden Tower Pyramid of Chaos So all the Earth System Magic Tower experts are gathered here. The tour guide probably understood Russell's curiosity and immediately said, The scale is impressive. They even made the whole place out of magical crystals. Russell was curious and touched the wall in front of him. He said, It was like a mirror. Yes, that's why they call the ruins electric glass. At the work area at the ruins, an old man wearing monocles was shaking hands with Russell and said, Welcome, I'm Spiegelman from the Pyramid, in charge of this expedition. Russell replied, Hello Elder Spiegelman I am Russell Raymond from the Fire Tower. Looking at the man in front of him, thoughts immediately appeared in Russell's mind, a talented man who was originally a commoner and became an elder of the Royal Golden Tower, he is also an archaeologist and explorer, has excavated more ruins than anyone in the kingdom. Maybe he can answer my questions. Alan Page he also came, he said, Here you are Sir Russell. When Russell saw him, he also warmly greeted him, Sir Alan, so you have come too. Nice to meet you. Russell said, hardworking genius, it's like cheating. Hearing that, Alan laughed and replied, well I want to protect the relics from the age of God. Now if only the guardian of the Red Tower comes we can discuss our movements and missions together. When the elder saw the two young men in front of him, he thought to himself, it's reassuring to have the kingdom's disciples protecting the excavation site. But what could possibly go wrong with such a stinking ruin that would require sending all of our manpower there? Seems a bit excessive but still. Suddenly the entire space here shook, making everyone surprised. There was an extremely loud explosion from the ruins. Something like a large iceberg was rushing outside. The elder spoke loudly, a crystal golem, Alan ordered everyone to safety immediately. This golem has no face but only legs, the middle part is its mouth. From its mouth came small pieces of ice. Those ice spikes immediately took the lives of the magicians of the Golden Tower. The Elder used all his strength to create a shield, but the shield could not withstand a single blow. His hands hit the ground hard. The whole land shook, layers of earth appeared from the ground, forming a mountain range to block the golem's attack. The golem's attack was impenetrable. The Elder spoke loudly, everyone built an earth wall to quickly block the attack. On the other side, Princess Rathmos is helping an injured young man. Growling, its roar echoed in the princess's ears, out of nowhere, the golem appeared right behind her. It held out its hand. Hundreds of small pieces of ice were heading towards the princess. When she was about to raise her hand to stop it. Then Russell's origin, fire spear, a spear slashed by Russell stopped everything. Russell immediately looked back, he still didn't realize it was the princess. Russell asked, are you okay? 
At this close distance, Russell suddenly discovered. Purple hair is very familiar. Princess Rathmos. The most important thing right now is how Russell can kill this monster or get the princess out of this place safely. At the same time, Alan Page's mouth was whispering a spell. Origin, ice arrow, an ice tip constructed from ice was shooting towards the golem. Clang, the arrow hit the monster's upper body. Its body kept freezing. The golem's movements also gradually slowed down. Alan Page he thought he tried to destroy its body completely but its body was too hard. Then the monster roared, its energy radiating out causing Page's ice magic to gradually break. Suddenly, a sword of that color slashed out, surprising everyone. Someone's hand was holding the sword tightly. Bloody sword, slashing. With just one strike, the monster instantly vanished into thin air. The footsteps of the person who had just killed that monster slowly approached. Seems like it's not too late. I'm Jaron from Red Tower. Looking at Jaron, Russell didn't say anything. As for Jaron, he also stared at Russell very meticulously. Back in the past, three days ago, in a certain room, Jaron was also present, the tower master said, Alex Raymond. Jaraya has already started investigating his death, any speculations? Next to him was the skull of the heretics that Russell had talked to before, the voice coming from there, speculating. Guess. Don't you remember why you killed him? Are you afraid of being caught? The tower owner used his fist and pounded it hard, saying, there's no way that could happen. I'm just disappointed. If you can handle Russell Raymond in the selection, Daria will no longer have any chance to doubt. The skull said, that's why the false information was received that Russell Raymond was a weak brat. The tower master asked, now you're trying to say it's my fault, right? While these two guys were arguing, from behind them, a sword suddenly stabbed into the ground. A person came out and said, did you call me here just to watch you two quarrel? The person who just arrived is Bismarck Ratmos, on his face there are many scars probably left by fighting. The master of the Red Tower bowed and said, I respectfully greet the Grand Duke. The Grand Duke he asked, my nephew has caused trouble, hasn't he? The master of the Red Tower replied, yes, initially it was expected that there would only be a few members of the security group. Before he could finish his sentence, the Grand Duke interrupted him, let's focus on the main issue, how do we take over those ruins? The tower master said, my disciple here, Jaron will join the guard group. If Jaron creates a side path through the protective barrier of the pyramid, the cultists, after passing through that road, will attack the group of protective magicians, as you know, in order for our plan to succeed. When the Grand Duke heard that, he immediately pondered. He said, we need to conquer the main tower that is protecting the current king, to destroy the tower master safely and without causing damage. We need that thing in the ruins so what we need to do now is. Don't we at least need to have a trump card for this important mission? The great man gave him a box with blue energy beams emitting. Returning to reality, Russell ran very quickly and hurriedly said, just a little. Please give up princess, it's too difficult. The princess immediately made a small sign, please keep this a secret. My presence here is top secret information, it must be kept secret and cannot be known by anyone. You, Russell just pretend you don't see me and let this go, of course it might be difficult for you to understand. Russell said, he really loves the ruins and antiques in there. If I were you, I would be very disappointed not to be able to see those ruins and artifacts for myself. If you are determined to go there, then you have nothing to worry about as I am here if you require me. The princess said, it's not okay, neither the king nor the nobles will let me come here alone like this, so you need to keep it a secret from me, and don't you, as a knight, feel worried about me, a grandchild here. Russell immediately replied, in just a short moment I witnessed the princess's strength. Ordinary knights are no match for your extraordinary strength, so there's no need to worry about you. Hearing what Russell said, the princess suddenly felt a little hot. She used her hand to flick Russell's forehead. Then just keep walking, as he walked, he said, anyway, I'll start here, you stay here and do your best to play your role well. In the princess's mind, Russell is not bad at all even though he is just a beginner. The Golden Tower elder shouted, everyone continued to join forces. Paige and Russell also quickly ran to the elder. Just looking at it made Russell feel stunned. Magic also doesn't work, what the hell? Alan Page said, collapsing space is one of the most powerful shields. The combined efforts of the magic attacks on the side of the pyramid did not create a single scratch. 
Well, because the attack was so strong, it was inevitable that they would be affected by their own attack. The angry elder shouted loudly, Damn it, as soon as we found the gate to the ruins why was space collapsed of all places? While everyone seemed to be in a hurry, Jurong was leaning against the cliff, standing to the side, watching. He thought to himself, I should send a report to the Grand Duke. After the battle with the golem and the failed attempt to destroy the gate to the ruins, it was late afternoon here, the elder's voice echoed loudly, is there a way to destroy those shields? Alan Page said, with the relic from the age of the gods that the spear tower possesses, we can focus our power and penetrate it. As soon as he heard this, a cheerful expression appeared on the elder's face again, he said, but I doubt they can lend it, Page replied, that's why I plan to take action. The elder he held Alan Page's hand tightly. If you can solve it, I promise to repay your gratitude on behalf of the Golden Tower. Seeing him regain that joy and enthusiasm, Page also felt happy for him. Alan Page he came to see Russell and Jaron. He bowed his head slightly and said, Even though I don't want to, I'm relying on you guys. Russell also bowed slightly and replied, No need, everything will be fine. Looking at the two of them happily talking to each other, Jaron thought, With Alan Page gone, there is only one fighting mage left here. Russell turned to Jaron and said, Sir Jaron, I want to discuss the shift rotation with you, about this evening. Jaron gave a strange smile and said, I will go first. I'm tired so I'll go first. That smile also made Russell feel that Jaron was not acting quite right. In the magic circle, there are two people sitting warming themselves against the cold. Suddenly something made these two feel suspicious. A group of people of unknown origin were approaching the ruins, the two of them shouted, Someone, stop right here under the control of the pyramid. But before they could say another word, those guys immediately killed them, perhaps they were the group of people sent by the great duke and the heretic. Jaron appeared and destroyed all the bodies of those two people. His hand placed on the outer layer of protective magic. He said, there was a change in plans. Collapsed space appeared protecting the ruins. To bring back the relic can destroy it. Alan Page has arrived at the Spear Tower. To threaten him we just need to take Spiegelman as a hostage. The guy wearing a mask with a red eye, he turned to Jaron and asked, what about the guy called the Disciple of the Fire Tower? Jaron said coldly, kill him, I will not forgive any mistakes this time. Suddenly another guy approached Jaron. He has an extremely large body, his armor is so heavy that every step he takes creates a slight vibration, he said, watching and complaining is too much. The big guy's weapon was close to Jaron's neck, causing Jaron's murderous intent. At this moment, the one-eyed man touched the weapon next to Jaron's neck and said, We stand on the same side. The one-eyed guy said, Well this is my beloved bastard. Mr. Blaines, he can't be hurt, that mocking and sarcastic voice made Jaron extremely angry. Jaron, he didn't think much and directly summoned his sword. However, Jaron's slash was teleported by the one-eyed man using magic, making Jaron unable to do anything to him. Jaron coldly said, what did you just say? The guy with a smiley face replied, I'm not allowed to joke around here, Jaron. Be a little more generous. While the other three were bored looking for work, next to them, their subordinates were forming a formation with a star in the center. Then from the center of the formation, strange arms continuously appeared. These are the monsters of the heretics. The one-eyed guy walked away saying, even though there was no way it would happen but. If things go wrong don't forget about what the Grand Duke gave you. Remember. After this quest ends you will live as a ghost until the day the Grand Duke sits on the throne. There must not be a single survivor from the conquest, Jaron he bowed his head and said but if anything goes wrong. Can I use the stuff my coon gave me? Named Blaine he looked at Jaron. He asked, do you want? Do we acknowledge it? I simply believe that you will not fail no matter what. Currently, the area outside the ruins has been devastated by those monsters, Jaron is standing on the cliff looking down. He said, sure as you want. You will become a ghost. A ghost that spreads fear and despair. In a tent under the white light of night, what? You want to know about a dragon with many horns. Why so suddenly, the question that Russell asked made the Golden Tower Elder a bit surprised because this was the first time someone asked him about that issue. Russell said, I saw a painting at the mission site, its strange appearance attracted me. The Elder said, actually I can't give you the exact answer. Russell heard the Elder's words and immediately had a sad look on his face. But I think of the Dragon King City. 
Hearing these three words Holy Dragon King, Russell's face was a bit doubtful whether this dragon really existed or not. The elder touched his chin and said, Because there aren't many historical records about it, I don't know many clues. But it is said that he was raised to be able to cope. With some evil force. Suddenly Pepper appeared again without Russell's summons, it continuously bit into Russell's hair and cried out in a hurry. The elder saw Pepper for the first time and was a little surprised and said, Huh, you can still summon spirits. Pepper seemed to sense danger, so he dropped to the floor to the surprise of the two people. Pepper's growl made Russell feel like something wasn't quite right. Something is entering the room. A monster from the heretical group found Russell and the Golden Tower Elder. The two of them were really surprised because they didn't know how they got in. The monster's body slowly swelled. Damn, before it could attack, it exploded and died. Outside, the fire grew bigger and bigger, it began to spread throughout the surrounding area. The buffalo-headed Iron Man from earlier was now standing in front of two members of the Golden Tower. Everyone quickly used their magic to stop them. The attacks from the land are attacking this buffalo-headed man. However, his outer armor is so thick that all attacks are disabled. He opened his mouth, his skills were pathetic. The members of the Golden Tower began to feel scared, the blonde-haired man's face was sweating, his eyes opened wide and he said loudly, what, was he unharmed after being hit by that attack? The buffalo-headed man's hand held his mace and raised it high. Deck. A hammer he hit caused several members of the Golden Tower to fly away without wings. On the other side, the one-eyed guy was extremely enjoying the current scene. In front of him were two other members of the Golden Tower preparing to attack him. Earth Arrow. Standing in front of that attack, he appeared very calm, a blue circle appeared on his hand. Then the earth and arrows all passed through that green circle. Then when the pyramid members weren't paying attention, that blue circle appeared right behind them. When they realized this monstrosity, whoosh, 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 blood had already stained the road he passed. He walked and sang happily. He said, wondering where old Spiegelman was. In other place. Russell was using his magic to create a shield, he asked, are you okay? The Golden Tower Elder narrowed his face and said angrily, what crazy people would dare to attack the Endymion excavation site? Russell now looked down at his burned wing on the ground, this was not strange to him at all. Russell said, they are the only ones who use zombies as weapons. The Elder immediately asked, could it be that they were evil cultists, said Russell, the Elder. I'm sorry, I have to protect someone important. I'll meet you outside the ruins. The professor didn't know that Princess Rathmos was also here, so he still doubted that there was anyone more important than him. On the princess's side, she also encountered those monsters. This time there was no preparation for an emergency, so she only had a rudimentary tool to defend herself. Swish. After defeating a monster, the princess thought to herself, where did these things suddenly come from? She turned back to the people behind her and said loudly, it's safe, go this way. Those three people tried to suppress the pain and ran in the direction the princess directed. However, as they walked a few steps, their eyes showed fear. The princess was also surprised. That buffalo-headed guy has already blocked the path of the other three people. The princess holds a pickaxe in her hand, in her mind, she thinks that using all her strength, she will defeat this obstacle. Clang, the sound of metal colliding with each other. Hit him with one blow and the princess' whole body immediately fell to the ground. When she looked at the place she had just hit, she felt that her attack was like a mosquito biting stainless steel, without any damage at all. The buffalo-headed man immediately asked, Who are you? The princess's weapon was also broken on one side, she thought to herself, If only I had a decent sword. No, I cannot be discouraged. I am Hecate Rathmos, princess of the kingdom of Endymion. I will protect my people. The buffalo-headed man raised his mace high, he said, anyway, it's interesting, then I have to enjoy this battle with you. The buffalo-headed man had just finished speaking when from behind the princess, a long flame spear like an arrow flew at extremely fast speed. Russell promptly came to the rescue and gave the buffalo head a promotional blow as a greeting. Boom! Russell immediately turned around and asked, are you okay, princess, help is coming. Although the fight was fierce, when he accidentally called the princess, Russell felt extremely guilty. Behind the layer of dust and smoke, the voice of the buffalo-headed man rang out, the man using the fire spear. You are a disciple of the fire tower. 
That guy using the fire spear. You must be a disciple of the fire tower. The Iron Man's words made Russell have his own thoughts in his heart. He knew this guy was targeting him. He said I will take care of this. You take everyone to the entrance of the ruins first. We will gather with the elders there. The princess immediately asked, Are you sure you can handle it yourself? Russell turned around and smiled and replied, You said you would give me a chance to repay the debt. Seeing such a lovely and confident expression, the corner of the princess's mouth immediately showed a smile. She led everyone away and said, Then leave it to you. That guy with the iron buffalo head raised his hand to his head and said, If we all rush forward, I will be happier. Russell's body was on fire, he said, This is our fight. Under the buffalo-headed man's body, a strange light was glowing. What, the buffalo-headed guy said loudly in surprise because he didn't know when a small creature was opening its mouth to spit fire. Bang, a huge fire. Overheating and long-lasting fire damage. In addition to explosive magic, Russell used two skills combined to accumulate on the tip of the spear. Russell rushed towards that buffalo-headed man. He shouted loudly, your tricks won't work on me. His hands grasped at the mace tightly. Russell said loudly with his spear, is it really a lie? The deck, mace head and spear head collided, creating an extremely large shock wave. The beam of light killed the buffalo-headed man's entire body. A fire so intense that it could even be compared to a volcano erupting. Meanwhile, not far away, many members of this exploration are running away because they are extremely scared. Suddenly they stopped because they encountered someone standing in front of their path. Mr. Jaron. You're injured, where have you been? The enemy attacked just now. Before the other guy could finish his sentence, a sword cut off their heads. The Jaron's eyes looked at the corpses below. Jaron's body has fire spots around it. He stood on a rock looking down from above. His eyes saw the elder of the pyramid, Mr. Spiegelman. He planned to reorganize the formation in the stellar ruins. Then the face of a woman in there surprised the Jaron. Jaron stood still for two seconds because he didn't expect Princess Hakati to be there. Bang, there was a huge explosion nearby. The Jaron immediately looked in the direction of the explosion. Whoosh, the sound of the sausage is so loud that even people from far away can feel it. In the center of the wind, the buffalo-headed man was posing with his hands in front of his chest, his armor was no longer new, but instead had scratches left by the fight. He was extremely surprised because his armor slowly made a cracking sound. How could the cursed refined black iron break? Under that iron mask is a man with dark blonde hair, Russell said, finally showing his face. But why are you frowning like that? The buffalo-headed guy gritted his teeth and said angrily, arrogant bastard. Don't underestimate me, his eyes suddenly turned purple, his arms appeared red and purple-black, extremely evil. Russell was suddenly startled, that aura. The buffalo-headed guy thought to himself, he didn't expect to have to use the knight's heart implanted in his body to confront this guy, but now if he doesn't use it, he can only wait for his allies to pick up the body. Relying on the power of his heart, the buffalo-headed man's strength increased extremely strongly. He continuously actively attacked Russell. Meanwhile, Russell also used his fastest speed to avoid him. Meanwhile, the buffalo-headed guy continuously held his big mace and chased Russell like a game of cat and mouse. But the mouse is smiling. Russell thought, he was much faster than that guy. Russell suddenly stopped, his legs spread wide, his body slightly bent down. Suddenly, where Russell was standing just now, his jump caused the entire ground to crack open. Russell's speed was so fast that his opponent had no time to react. The buffalo-headed man opened his mouth and cried out in pain. Russell stood behind him, his hand held the fire spear high, death was about to be given to this big and talkative opponent. Suddenly next to Russell appeared a blue swirl. Then it continuously released energy, making Russell extremely surprised. The energy becomes stronger and stronger. When that green energy dissipates, Russell was already a long distance away from the buffalo-headed man. He still doesn't know what happened. Russell looked up at his left arm. Russell thought to himself, it's that person. At this moment, next to the buffalo-headed guy was the one-eyed red guy. He put his hands on his waist and said, the pressure in the deep sea is also useful, right? Facing the other two, Russell summoned his fire spear again. Long flame spear, full wind, on the tip of the spear is a huge amount of fire along with ancient inscriptions. This attack. 
How could he avoid it? Russell's thinking was that this strike would kill one of these two bastards. The tip of the spear was shooting towards its opponent. On the contrary, the one-eyed guy was extremely calm. He hummed, of course I came up with this great idea. His hand opened a blue circle. In that circle appeared the images of the Golden Tower Elder and the Princess. His purpose was very simple, which was to teleport Russell's attack to them. Russell's eyes opened wide because he was extremely worried. On the side of the Golden Tower members, a circular passage led by a one-eyed man was above their heads. The energy of the word makes everyone feel a little bit but still don't know what's going on. The princess raised her head to look. What caught her eye was a spear falling from the sky. When the Golden Tower elder saw it, his face immediately broke out in sweat. The princess is also in a scared mood like everyone here. Meanwhile Russell felt helpless, he exclaimed, it's impossible. This cannot happen. Duh. A scene of desolation under the smoke and dust caused by the attack just launched by Russell. Russell quickly ran to the princess with everyone. No, this one word from Russell's own mouth was enough to understand how terrible the scene before his eyes was. The princess, the elder, their helplessness and regret appeared in Russell's words. Just then, a hand was raised. It turned out that the Golden Tower Elder was still alive, but looking at his appearance, he was seriously injured. Russell immediately asked him if he was okay. The Elder asked Russell, where are the others? Russell turned his head and what he saw was just someone's arm lying on the ground. Russell regretted it, he leaned down and said, I'm sorry. Suddenly there was a fluctuation of energy nearby causing Russell to turn his head to the left towards his arm. Jaron carried the princess out from the smoke and dust just now. Russell shouted, Princess. The Golden Tower elder then realized that the girl who often followed him was Princess Hikati. Russell didn't know that Jaron had brought along the heretics, so he didn't take any precautions and approached and said, Thank God you're okay. Mr. Jaron, thank you for rescuing the princess. Jaron narrowed his eyes and smiled. Russell just discovered that Jaron's sword had penetrated deep into his skin without realizing it. Russell's body was almost cut in half by Jaron. Whoosh, a lot of blood flowed from Russell's mouth. The elder lost his voice, Uncle Russell. Pepper noticed that Russell was in danger and automatically came out. However, before Pepper could attack, the one-eyed man's space gate appeared and took Pepper somewhere. The voice of the one-eyed man from behind Jaron said, You keep bothering me. Damn bug. Russell's whole body no longer had any strength. Jaron said, I thought I told you about using Spiegelman as a hostage. The one-eyed guy replied, well, you can act as a hostage, right? Jaron, how dare you betray us? The elder was extremely angry. His two hands formed a yellow vortex to attack everyone in front of him. Shut up old man, the bullheaded man's mace came down. One of his clubs hit the elder straight in the back, causing him to fall unconscious on the ground. The one-eyed man pointed his finger and asked, who is that girl anyway? Jaron said, if we save her, Princess Hikati, we can control the entire kingdom of Endymion. Because of your stupid actions, everything almost ended in vain, the one-eyed guy said, as long as she's not dead, it's okay. We can't let that happen, Russell's voice rang out, causing them to immediately pay attention. You will not achieve your goal. The buffalo-headed guy was angry at the termite he had beaten before, so he said he wanted to go deal with Russell. Meanwhile, small lightning bolts appeared on Russell's hand. Rings, calls for due. The bullheaded man's hammer was also raised high, he said proudly, revenge for last time, kid. The one-eyed man felt like there was fog around him again. Death, how happy is the desire to take revenge on one's opponent. However, how could the buffalo-headed guy know that Russell would use less than half of his strength when fighting him, dragonized? The buffalo-headed guy just now discovered that there was something unusual about Russell's body. A huge flame shot up ten feet high. The one-eyed guy thought, it can't be that the mist is to obscure our vision. In that mist, the subordinates sent by the one-eyed man continuously groaned. After a while, they lay piled on the ground and were lifeless. The one-eyed guy summoned several space gates at once, he thought, so that guy was defeated for a reason, I can feel them without looking. The amount of mana suddenly increased beyond my awareness. With the help of magic, the one-eyed man felt the dragon's aura under that white mist. What the hell? Russell from somewhere used a spear to pierce the one-eyed man's body. Those black and yellow eyes represent his anger. 
even though his mouth was constantly spitting blood, the one-eyed guy smiled and said, Ha ha, he looks no different from a monster. Swish, bang. Meanwhile, Jaron left the princess lying in the corner, thinking that if he left the survivors, the mission would fail. Two spells, fire moon sword, Jaron's two hands summoned two swords, his eyes also became blood red. He said loudly from behind Russell, Come here Russell Raymond. Russell gritted his teeth in anger because his dragon transformation was about to expire after a while of fighting. He tightly grasped the fire spear. Russell had no choice but to bet on this move. Boom, a flame formed from the two attacks colliding. Russell's legs collapsed to the ground. Blood continuously flowed from his mouth, and Russell's whole body trembled. Meanwhile, opposite was Jaron, his arm suddenly let go indifferently. An extremely large hole appeared in the middle of his body. Then under the light of hope, the Jaron fell to the ground. Russell's eyes turned to look. He discovered the one-eyed guy when he was still alive. He was about to say something to this one-eyed guy. The one-eyed guy immediately said, Don't tell me you think he's the only one who can confront you, you're so simple-minded. And this guy has the same ability as you, you know. His arm pointed in the direction where the green energy was emitting. Possessor of power. Comparable to a dragon. A black dragon wing opened. Russell was dumbfounded. The chimera's heart is the key to helping Jaron become a dragon. Is the heart of the chimera, helping Jaron officially become a humanoid dragon. On his head, two horns grow forward, his hair also turns from red to white, he grows a tail and his limbs also grow, sharp claws. Russell thought to himself, its magic power is so powerful that it cannot be measured. Jaron raised his hand forward, a stream of blood-red gas appeared. He clenched his fist. The one-eyed man standing to one side was immediately affected by Jaron's magic power, causing him to hug his neck and scream. Jaron's voice also changed, are you intentionally hiding your power to force me to use this heart? The one-eyed guy laughed and said, you did that of your own volition. The one-eyed guy used his eyes to look at Jaron's body. He said, didn't the chimera's heart help you instantly level up countless magic circles, and that's it. I didn't ask you to fight that guy and end up losing. Jaron immediately dropped the one-eyed man to the ground, he said, I agree, I misunderstood the mission. It's time for Russell Raymond to end, Jaron's hand is aimed at Russell, his magic power immediately appears. It immediately grabbed his shirt. Jaron grabbed Russell's collar, his current expression was the expression of a strong person looking at a weak person in Jaron, he was the stronger one, he said, he had performed very well before. But unfortunately you can't protect anything anymore, as Jaron said, he launched a blow towards the ruins. It's over Russell Raymond, Jaron's attack immediately collided with the ruins barrier. Crack, the previous barrier even the members of the Golden Tower couldn't break, but his simple attack could easily break it. The one-eyed guy stood to the side and thought to himself, broke the space barrier too, you're quite good, Jaron. Jaron's proud expression made Russell extremely angry, he grabbed his hand that was holding his neck, and a beam of fire shot directly into Jaron's face. Taking that blow caused one side of Jaron's face to be injured, but he felt extremely happy, he showed his white teeth and said yes, I thought about it again. I will give you a satisfactory death, Jaron he punched Russell with a strong punch forward. Russell's body immediately flew into the broken barrier. Inside the space rift. Just take your time and enjoy the agony of having your soul torn apart, carry the shame of incompetence with you until the end of time. Jaron's words made Russell slowly fall into a dream. When he woke up from that dream, the first thing Russell saw was a nurse asking him, Are you awake? Hearing these words, Russell immediately put his hand on the mattress of the bed and gasped. Everything around him appeared before Russell's eyes, making him confused. The female doctor said, you are at Camelot's hospital. Russell clutched the bed rail and said, hospital, what about the war in the ruins? The female doctor asked in surprise, what exactly do you want to say? Suddenly Russell grabbed the female doctor's shoulder and said loudly, princess, are you okay with everyone? It's true that this girl is no different from when Russell was in the real world at all. At this time, another doctor also came, Russell's actions made the male doctor say, the patient please calm down. The other girl immediately said that while cleaning at the Lubrium Museum, he suddenly had a seizure so he was taken to the hospital, these words from the female doctor made Russell feel dumbfounded. He didn't believe what he was hearing because in his mind everyone was in danger. Russell kept shouting, Pepper, Pepper. 
Pepper, where are you? Russell's mind is thinking about everything as he talks. Have I returned to the time before the regression backslash? Not sure what happened. Suddenly a ring of golden magic appeared. It immediately bound Russell's body so he couldn't move. The person who just performed that magic was a female doctor with blue hair, tall body and she looked extremely aura of a real doctor, she said, you've made enough noise, you're being rude, patient, please calm down so we can take you back to your hospital bed. Sitting at the consultation table, the female doctor said that according to the nurse, he fainted at the museum and had severe hallucinations when he woke up. Russell said, I have never hallucinated before. The female doctor said, I very much sympathize with what you have shared. Have you ever heard of the dream-eating tree? It uses the most beautiful illusions to make traps, then lets people starve to death under trees and uses their corpses as nourishment. Russell asked, what does that have to do with me? The female doctor explained that that day, pollen from the dream-eating tree on display in the museum was leaked into the air, and in addition to him, there were many people. Also had similar hallucinations, these words made it even more difficult for Russell to believe. The point is that the museum will bear all hospital fees for the patient. Russell is wondering if what he did before, when his family died and was left alone to support himself, was accepted into the fire tower, and slowly grew stronger to protect his loved ones, was it just an illusion? After a while, the female doctor wrote a page, she said, this is the medical report, you can ask the museum manager to compensate you. This is when you should wake up. Is it all just a dream? I'm not sure Mrs. Dariah will know about this, so Russell wants to find her for answers. At Dariah's castle, underneath the entrance gate, there are two guards standing guard in the rain. Russell's figure slowly walked over with the patient's clothes. The two guards saw this and said loudly, Wait a minute, please stop. Russell bowed and said, I came to see Mrs. Dariah. The guard immediately said, Who do you think you are? But Russell doesn't care about these meaningless words, what he wants now is to hear an answer from Mrs. Dariah, to hear her say with her own mouth that Russell is not a dream. My name is Russell Raymond I used to be Daria's disciple. The two guards heard that and immediately asked each other in surprise, Mrs. Daria's disciples, I've never heard of this name. I know right away that you're crazy, so go away quickly. Russell clenched his fists backslash. He said, please give me some time, please let me see her. Russell wanted to rush in but was stopped by a guard. One of his punches sent Russell flying nearly ten steps. While Russell was standing up, a carriage was approaching. Mrs. Dariah inside the car asked, what's the matter? A guard bowed and said, master of the fire tower, this young man keeps claiming to be your disciple. Mrs. Dariah was also surprised and asked, my disciple. Then she looked down at the young man. I don't know you. These words seemed to extinguish all of Russia's expectations. I don't know you. This one sentence seems to kill all of Russell's efforts over the past time. A sad expression appeared on Russell's eyes. He looked at Mrs. Dariah but didn't know what to say. She also looked at Russell with silence. The two guards said, let's go now, and so the carriage kept going. Leaving Russell in the rain. In the museum room. Russell was looking at the heart that he had received its blessing from before, the outer glass had been cracked by Russell in anger, he thought that meant it was all really due to tree pollen, what a nightmare. That's ridiculous, Russell threw a punch straight at the glass. Blood also flowed from his hand, but the physical pain did not appear in Russell's mind, but instead the words he said to himself, if this is really a dream, wake me up before I've come this far, there's no way this is real. The museum's alarm bell rang. Immediately two people ran over. They immediately locked Russell to the ground and asked, Who are you? Dragging him out, Russell continued to struggle in anger, gritting his teeth. There's no way this could be real. After that, I tried to prove that my life was not a dream but it was all in vain, a few years had passed. I still try desperately to fight reality, but the years that have passed have eroded my will. There were a few people in the rather rudimentary carriage, Russell was now no different from a man in his fifties or sixties, a man gave him a newspaper. Russell took it and read. After reading the whole thing, he said, the youngest spear tower owner. That's the person that Russell cherishes so much, Alan Page, but in this world the two of them don't know each other at all. Looking at that photo, Russell couldn't say anything more. At Walker Hill Academy this afternoon, the carriage carrying Russell and several others was entering. 
he was sweeping trash at the academy. As he worked, thoughts appeared in his mind. He didn't expect that he would come back here. Russell emptied his mind. And give up your ambitions. And in the end Russell abandoned himself. Thinking back, life like this is not so bad. In fact, this is probably the most suitable job for my current personality. Suddenly Russell's eyes noticed a strange noise in the direction. Russell, standing behind the wall, discovered a few kids bullying another kid. Who do you think you are, behaving like that? Know your place, just because we talk to you, you think you're equal to us. Russell wanted to turn away because these things reminded him of his past, but the voice of the bullied person rang out, no matter what you guys said. I will become a magician. The blonde guy was probably the mastermind behind this. He laughed and said, why is this disabled bastard? He has a stenosis disease that transports mana in his body, but he's so talkative. Plus, remember the crime your family committed. I will leave you a mark that you will never forget. The blonde man's finger suddenly appeared as a small flame just before the boy's eyes. When he thought he couldn't resist and could only endure. Then something unimaginable happened. The guys who had just threatened him were all lying on the ground motionless. That boy didn't know what had just happened a few seconds ago. What caught his eye was a man sweeping the yard. Russell didn't want to let the boy know that he helped him, so he just kept talking about it. The boy looked at Russell with a very strange expression as if he had found light in the path he chose. The time was about to get dark, Russell picked up the sandwich and said after taking a bite, it's really annoying. Why are you following me? The blue-haired boy with extremely big eyes smiled happily and said, I'm just reading a book, I find this quiet place very good to concentrate. As soon as the boy finished speaking, Russell's eyes turned to a certain side with murderous intent. The bullies from before immediately felt those eyes and were so scared that they trembled. Russell could only breathe a sigh of relief. He asked, you have vascular stenosis, right? I know someone exactly like you who also attended this academy. The boy happily asked, what happened to that person? Russell threw the bread away and said, he was expelled from school because he couldn't overcome his limits like trash that was arranged to become trash. Without even being able to achieve his goal, for a magician with a narrow vein of mana, it is no different from a death sentence. Sometimes knowing how to give up is also brave. This Russell is telling his own story to that boy with the hope that he will know his strength. The boy said firmly, I can't do that. I cannot give up my dream. Looking at that boy, Russell didn't want to say anything more because he probably knew he would be just like him. While sitting quietly alone, a voice rang out, Hey there. Come here. Russell immediately asked, what's the matter? The bald man said, be careful. Don't hang out with him. If anything happens, you could get into big trouble. His words made Russell a bit confused. Russell said, I don't really understand what you mean. The bald man said, that's the son of the traitor that the Red Tower chased away. At the base of the heretics in this world, the skull emitted green energy. From it came a voice. The world of the guardians was coming to an end. Proceed to Walker Hill Academy. And denounce our return. Under this wonderful atmosphere, there is a stream of mana emitting outside. The boy's hand tightly grasped the other wrist, in the palm of his hand was a ball of extremely strong energy emitting, he said, just a little more just a little more. But no matter how hard he tried, the ball would shatter in frustration. Suddenly Russell came and asked, why don't you give up becoming a magician? Hearing this question, the other boy felt confused. Russell asked again, what's your reason for letting him continue? The boy immediately bowed slightly and replied, that's because I made a promise. With my mother. The two were talking to each other when suddenly some uninvited guests suddenly appeared. Those were the guys who tried to bully the boy before, but today they were carrying weapons, so they confidently said, so you guys are here, last time it was just a mistake, but this time don't try to run away. Russell's body suddenly had a layer of red energy radiating, he said, watch carefully. This is the only way you can become a magician. Those thugs now feel that they have provoked the wrong opponent that they should not have provoked, but every mistake has to pay something. Russell clenched his fist. One punch to pacify the world. Time passed like that, here it was snowing season, Russell was sitting and watching that boy practice, a magician might be too overwhelmed by his weak body when using magic. Russell said loudly, run faster, if you don't know how to keep your distance you will easily lose your life in battle, magic can move faster with a strong and well-trained body. Unlike those who are fully developed physically, the effectiveness of magic will be exaggerated if used by an immature child who is still learning. However, his growth rate is really slow. 
After taking one blow from Russell, the boy felt it was hard to breathe. Seeing this, Russell said, he promised to try but is this all he has? The boy stood up and said loudly, once again please help me. Real Combat Magic That boy had just used an ice magic arrow to hit his opponent in the tournament. His opponent was hit by ice arrows until he no longer had the strength to resist. Spiegel wins. As soon as they heard the referee's announcement, the guy sitting above immediately chatted, the kid with the little mana flow due to strong blockage won, the difference between their skills is huge, it's great, there. During the battle, Spiegel's opponent gritted his teeth, his body trembled angrily and said, the bastard just wait and see. Spiegel didn't pay attention to his words, but his eyes looked up at the fan seats. He thought, thanks to you, I have become a magician who has reached two magic circles. Russell didn't go there, but he could still see that the boy he had taught had grown up, so he was a little happy. Suddenly someone called Russell causing him to turn back. The person who came to see Russell was a blonde guy with two guards following him, the guy said, long time no see, bug. In Russell's subconscious, this guy is Coma Frederick, in his previous life, he didn't dare say anything when facing Russell. In a certain room that is quite old, there are spider webs surrounding it, which is enough to show that this room has probably been vacant for a long time. Russell is sitting against the wall. The bald-haired man said, I told you to stop causing trouble, right? The coma man smiled triumphantly and said, Because that's my son, you've bothered him too many times. It turns out Spiegel's opponent is his son, no wonder he's just as trashy as his father. Russell smiled and said, so that's your son, no wonder they're both so miserable. Coma, he leaned down close to Russell and said, it seems you are not aware of the situation you are in, if I use dark magic connections, I can easily eliminate. Not only you but also the boy you care about. The corner of Russell's mouth showed a smile. He laughed so loudly that everyone present thought he was crazy. Russell raised his head and said, I, pay attention to that boy. I just wanted to awaken that kid's potential for fun. After that conversation, Name Coma forced Russell to leave the academy immediately if he did not want to die. And Russell's decision was to leave because he didn't care about anything anymore. In his mind, there is only the boy left with his image from before. At the gate of the library, Russell was holding his bag and walking out the gate when Spiegel discovered him. The boy asked, where are you going? Russell replied bluntly, I will leave this place, the boy quickly asked, why, why did you leave? Russell's hand tightly grasped the bag, he couldn't say that if he didn't leave, Spiegel would be in danger or even die. So Russell didn't say anything more but ran away directly. Spiegel immediately blocked Russell's path and said loudly, can't you hear me, stop quickly. Suddenly the boy discovered. Russell's face had small wounds, the boy wanted to ask about it, but Russell interrupted him, what do you expect from someone like me? Do you think I'm your tutor? Russell just happened to fall away in the boy's surprise. Don't be delusional anymore. Those words made Spiegel cry because the person he considered closest in the academy had now left him. Inside the carriage, traveling through the city, the coma sitting inside said, that's why I desire money and power, everything becomes easy when you are rich. He was relaxing and suddenly his eyes widened and he lost his voice. What is happening? How dare you stand in my way of Frederick? Before he could finish speaking, this group of heretics gave him a blow that ended his life. In the forest, Russell immediately felt that something was not right. Fires began to spread to the forest near the city. When Russell arrived, the whole city was engulfed in flames. The academy is not okay. Today's attack also announced the return of our sect, go away. Moments after fear and despair. Then let them taste the smell of blood. Under the leader's orders, the other heretics were frantically killing everyone in the area they passed through. Ice arrow, launch. The heretic woman felt magical power and a smile appeared on her face. She said, there's still one mouse left alive. Russell felt this was really bad so he quickly ran to the academy. When he arrived, he saw that Spiegel was very tired and seemed to have no strength to fight anymore. In the woman's hand, three purple blades appeared, she said, you are really interesting. Aren't you afraid of death? Spiegel the kid even smiled and replied in front of his death, I bought enough time for others to escape, so it's okay. Meanwhile, Russell was thinking, I can feel the terrible magic power. Even the professors couldn't deal with him. 
A vow when Russell was still a guardian, I will definitely be stronger to protect more people, whenever the opportunity comes, Russell will appear. But when he woke up, Russell was just a weak person, what could Russell do? You have to run away, that's right, there's no need to sacrifice yourself. The heretic girl Kiai smiled bitterly and asked, you weak bastard, you should know your identity. Spiegel said, we know more than anyone that we can't win. But protect the people. Is the duty of a bodyguard. These words made Russell remember himself when he had sworn to be a true guardian, but now after intending to run away, those words rang out again. The heretic girl said coldly, that innocence will kill you. Suddenly, a knife stabbed right into the heretic girl's waist. She was in pain but still tried to use the magic on her hand. She moved her hand back a little. Then unleashed a fist to send Russell flying away. Blood continuously flowed out from the wound, making her angrily say, Damn insects, how dare you! From behind her, Spiegel summoned a level 3 ice magic arrow. Sharp pieces of ice continuously attacked from behind, leaving her unable to respond. After casting, the amount of mana in Spiegel's body was almost exhausted. Opposite, Russell he held a weapon on the ground. He didn't hesitate and rushed directly towards his opponent. A blow through the neck is truly nostalgic. And she finally died and turned into ashes with nature and heaven. Spiegel walked closer to Russell. Russell immediately asked, Are you okay? Looking at the wound caused by that heretic, Spiegel quickly said, Russell can't stop the bleeding. Russell said, You go, hurry up, the other guys are coming here. The boy replied, But I can't go alone. Russell put his hand on Spiegel's shoulder. Say, are you planning on turning me into a useless teacher that even my disciples can't protect? You have to get out of here alive. And become a guardian, promise me one more thing, right? Spiegel immediately grabbed Russell's hand, the boy was happy that Russell accepted him as a disciple but also sad that he couldn't help Russell, Spiegel said, I promise I will become a guardian, master. Watching the boy walk away, Russell thought, he was originally like that. You are like a lost dream of mine, like the courage that I gave up. That's why I hate you, Russell is not hesitant about death right now because he has already died once and if he dies again it doesn't matter. And that's also the reason I like you. The heretic said, you trash, using level 2 magic on you is a waste. A smile appeared on Russell's face, and the image of single-handedly taking care of the entire country appeared again. Russell jumped high. We can only learn magic when we recognize the high and low rules of the magic circle. Flash. Two eyes of fighting spirit flashed. The heretic now realized that Russell was not easy to deal with at all. You have to live Spiegel. After death, a world filled with blue appeared before Russell's eyes. Someone said, it's time for you to go. Russell felt that his body was completely different from before and asked, where is this? Immediately, someone with a half-human figure and a mask on his face said, You're finally awake. What is that world like? Russell replied, I lost the dream I always pursued, although I also found the dream and protected it. Russell discovered. Spiegel that boy appeared right before my eyes. Russell quickly ran up to him. But an invisible wall prevented him from doing so. Russell's legs knelt down, he said helplessly, Finally. I can't protect anything either, the mysterious woman said, no, you're wrong. Russell Raymond, heir to the power of the dragon. Russell heard that and immediately turned his head to ask, who are you? That woman touched the invisible shield and said, I am the master of this cruel world. Will those people call me by name? Electric Glass. Electric Glass, this name had already heard it once before coming to the Russell ruins. The mysterious woman said, yes, this place lets you see your deepest fear. To you that is your value. The reason you have power. Are you worthy of the power you have? Surely you have the answer for yourself, your reason is to become a guardian who can protect everyone. Russell knelt down, he put his hands on the ground and respectfully asked, so you mean this is all just a test for me? The woman immediately said, yes, you have overcome the fear in your mind. You have proven that even without strength you can still protect others because of your choice, your determination and courage. Thanks to Spiegel, Russell finally found the light, found the ideal in his heart. The mysterious person said, What is in front of you is not an illusion, it is what you are protecting and will spend your life protecting. Looking at Russell standing with his ideal, that mysterious person thought, I have finally fulfilled my promise my heir. It's your time. 
Come out with a bright light. Notification. Receiving the Blood Dragon resets the body. You receive the first golden mask. Outside the current world, the Jaron said, That's impressive. Your name is Alan Page. Alan, he seemed like after a while of fighting Jaron, he also started to fall into a state of exhaustion. His whole body was full of wounds. His voice weakly said, I'm sorry, Princess. Then he immediately knelt down and confessed to the princess. The one-eyed guy standing to the side said, I heard you're a genius. You clearly understood the battle situation as soon as you entered the battle and acted very reasonably even though you had very little information. Who would have guessed that you would use that artifact as bait to save the princess? However those efforts didn't help anything. Hey since it's done then let's clean up these leftovers. Jaron, he didn't care about what the one-eyed guy said, but what he just felt from the electric glass made him have to find out. He stood in front of the ruins protection, his hand summoning said magic, first that magic barrier. Appearing before Jaron was something quite large and quite monstrous in shape. The golden tower elder said loudly, it was a relic from the age of the gods. The princess is helpless because they can't do anything right now but just watch him take that thing away. Jaron he thought, after finding that item. I will not give it to humanity, I will show it to the world myself. What we do will be proven. That I am better than you, break it. An extremely large tube directly crashed into the protective shield. Bang, the powerful impact created a huge explosion. Inside that shield, there was an arm extended to block the attack. Everything becomes blurred. Juran he doesn't understand what just happened just now. Everyone became frightened. Because they couldn't believe that relics from great myths couldn't penetrate the temple's glass. Alan Page saw that and immediately said, there is someone on the other side. From that cloud of smoke, light still flashed. Russell, wearing a mask and holding a flame spear, looks very similar to the main characters in the novel. Both of them have one eye on Jaron. They all recognized that mask and did not believe it appeared on this man. Russell jumped up holding the fire reward, the first thing he aimed for when he went outside was this one-eyed guy. The one-eyed guy activated his magic. His two hands blocked Russell's fire spear. But Russell's current strength made him feel uncomfortable and say, damn. He kept resisting but. The result this time was that one shot from Russell left him unable to resist. The one-eyed guy's body looked like a ball and rolled out ten feet. Jaron stood aside thinking, I can't believe he can drive double portals. Then Russell immediately removed the ropes on the princess and the elder. The two people didn't understand anything, so the elder asked, what are you talking about? Took off the mask, Russell's handsome face was still there, happiness appeared on his face, Russell said, I'm glad everyone is safe. Looking at that familiar face, they both exclaimed, Russell Raymond, why are you here? Standing to the side, Alan Page smiled and thought, Princess, before I didn't think this battle would be easy, but now he's here. The princess raised her hand to Russell's cheek and said, unable to believe he was still alive. Then Russell's hand grabbed the princess's hand. His name Jaron slowly lowered. Russell said, we will talk later. Jaron he said, that little rat makes me feel uncomfortable. You returning here won't solve anything, I will kill you and take back that artifact. Even if you return here, nothing will change, I will kill you and take back that artifact, although his words are very arrogant, he has the capital to be arrogant. Looking down from the ruins, this place is quite peaceful. However, underneath that peace is a battle for survival between two opposing sides. Another huge explosion. Jaron and Russell fought evenly, Jaron said while fighting, this mask is mine, Russell asked, Blaine is behind everything, right? When mentioning Blaine, Jaron shouted angrily and shut up. Then he threw out a knife that sent Russell flying into the air. While he was caught off guard, Russell appeared right behind him and said, Stop and admit it. That you are just Blaine's shadow. Then Russell released a spear containing a huge amount of magic. The mountains under the spreading attack also created loud explosions. These two people were facing each other on the ground. Jaron he held his sword tightly, he said coldly, the truth is very simple I am Jaron the Dawn of Doom. It was not his shadow, the sword of light that destroyed everything was slashed by Jaron's own hand. One of his attacks caused an entire mountain range to split in two. In the dust and smoke caused by the slash, there was still light. In that attack, Russell had to use dragon transformation to counter it, otherwise it would have been difficult for him to come out unscathed. Jaron said, if only there was that mask. 
then he will become my shadow. Strength is truth. You know that well. Russell then took out the mask, he put it on and said, strength is not the most important thing Jaron. Notice the mask supports thinking and creates signs of dragon blood, the second dragon transformation is ready, do you want to use the mask? Of course we will use it. Transform into a dragon for the second time. There is something more important than strength that is courage. These two words courage made the Jaron laugh out loud like it was ironic. He said loudly, truly the nonsense of someone who has never fallen into my shadow. Russell is reflecting on the darkness he has experienced. He summoned a series of fire spears and replied, You are wrong, I too have fallen into darkness. But the difference is, we always aim for the light. Magic spear, piercing damage. Jaron's dragon wings spread out, he replied, Nonsense. So let's prove it. Prove the light you pursue. Russell will prove to him that light by fighting the darkness. That is not an easy task. Under those two powerful impacts, there was nothing new left in the entire space here. Jaron he discovered. One of his arms had been severed and was lying on the ground. He thought angrily, I even have the heart of a chimera. Why? I still can't reach him, why? Give it up Jaron. Russell's words made Jaron angrily shout, shut up, then from his body other arms sprouted. He shouted, I can't lose. Whoosh, blood spurted out from Jaron's mouth. Notification of dragon transformation status remaining 10 seconds. Russell said, me too, we can't lose either. Russell brought down his spear. He closed his eyes, a golden energy was surrounding him. Jaron he was like a monster rushing in front of Russell. But Russell he still closed his eyes. Fiery and slashing magic. Jaron he has nothing left to say. Because he knew that under this level of attack, giving him any more lives would result in failure. Darkness brings fear and a new day begins for bright lights. On the ground, Russell stood under the black smoke. His eyes noticed. Jaron is constantly spitting blood because his injury is so severe. Jaron said weakly, not yet. Not yet. Then his body crumbled to pieces and lay on the ground. Chimera. I wanted to become a dragon but in the end I couldn't. Is this also fate? At this time, the mountain from the ruins suddenly erupted. Russell stood there watching it burn. Russell Raymond, everyone's voices suddenly woke him up. The three people Alan Page, the Golden Tower Elder and the Princess were waving at him. Russell also smiled and waved to them as a celebration for this victory. While he was still healing, Pepper hit Russell in the back, causing him to almost fall to the ground. Russell hugged Pepper and said, Pepper, you are safe. Thanks God. Let's go home. We all about endymion anyway.